exactly what kind of day to say hey shut up youtube we got plenty to talk about right now sorry youtube's trying to play some tunes in the background but we can't be doing that right now we have much more important things to be talking about with elon musk once again being the bane of all hodlers hopes and despairs so with that said is it time for a little bit of twitter analysis i don't know about that just yet perhaps save it for a little bit of later but with that said i do want to welcome you back to crown's crypto cave it's a lovely friday over here and there's gonna be absolutely no fucking rest for the wicked today as bitcoin does head right around that $40,000 region that we did speak about this past prior week. Now getting a bit of a short-term rejection here. Regardless of whether you think it was an Elon tweet or not, who the fuck knows? Because at the end of the day, well, Bitcoin was right at, you know, the prior highs in this case. And it's, you know, rather likely that things do pull back in this metric. But with that said, I do think that there's a lot of, there, there, there's actually like a lot of things to be focused on right now. Mostly because a lot of people are going to get prematurely very, very bearish based off this, which perhaps it is going to be warranted, but there is going to be very, something very, very particular that I'm looking for in order to be looking for like some actual downside right here. And of course, you know, can it actually happen? Yes, uh, you know, absolutely. But with, with that in mind, until trends are broken, I would like to remain one with the friends with the trends. Anyways, uh, what else do we want to say before we get into this? Let's just get into it right now. How about that? Anyways, on to the Crown Chain application, which we found at app.crownchain.net. It is 100% free. It's also available on your mobile devices now, too. If you so desire and what do we see over here well not much difference from the bitcoin dominance or the fear and greed index i imagine this is going to dump again <laughs> coming into tomorrow as well as everyone gets feared as fuck but what's more important over here is that openers is actually continuing to move to the upside which with that said bitcoin did test the top side of this daily range essentially right around that forty thousand dollars level so with openers going up alongside book bitcoin having you know more or less a decent closure yesterday I would still say that this overall aligns with a thirty to forty thousand dollar area working out as accumulation. The question right now is: Does Bitcoin base out at low thirty thirty thousand dollars once again? Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. Is that exactly where I'd be looking for it to happen from? No, actually, I still do think that Bitcoin probably pushes to the forty thousand dollar level first before coming down and putting in another base. But ultimately, at the end of the day, there is going to be major criteria set upon that, and uh, I think that this weekend is going to be rather interesting. So, any uh, any any news from the top ten best? coins the top 10 worst coins over here uh actually yes filecoin uma nano theta theta feel internet computer protocol whatever the fuck that thing is v chain and uh, BitTorrent in the graph all having uh, actually decent days right there on the other side though kusama getting smacked in the face doggy coin but they had their big event are you telling me that it was a it was a buy the rumor sell the news type thing as fucking always with doggy coin and pretty much all events like that well what do you know having a bit of a 10 percent pullback right there but that's nothing for doggy coin until it pulls back about 90 percent it's nothing to be too concerned with of 
course, for the hodlers over there on crypto uh, Reddit, as you know. Shiba Inu also getting smacked in the face. It's almost as if it trades with Doggy Coin, two worthless pieces of shit. Polkadot, Phantom Synthetics, Polygon, Icon, MDEX, and XFIN Network. So actually, uh, funnily enough, a lot of the better acting coins over the past week or so are getting hit a lot more hard uh, on this last little move here. So with that in mind, let's keep that, or sorry, let's keep that in the back of our mind's eye as we do peruse through the general market here. But before that, into the market data tab we go, what do we see right now? We do see, we do see that open interest actually taking a leg up to the $6 billion marker, actually a little bit above yesterday. It looks like we got to about six point uh, six and a quarter billion um, yesterday, just for, just for a nanosecond right there, as Bitcoin essentially tests the tops out of the range. And on a line chart, it looks a lot more obvious. By the way, it actually did a little bit of an exercise with, uh, with with Elsie yesterday and I taught her trends and it was actually it was actually kind of funny man it's actually very enlightening for me because uh, apparently on line charts it's just significantly easier to see and I do agree with that but you know, more to the point here, what can we see right here? We still see an obvious downtrend, right? Until Bitcoin really breaks above about 41,000 bucks, as we did speak about over this prior week, there's really not any major run into the $40,000 to be aware of. However, I do still think that it will happen over time. The question is, where does that fucking bull trap happen? Because I do not think that Bitcoin is done at the $30,000 to $40,000 base. You know, realistically, it's probably going to take months in, you know, in this case. And as Bitcoin does oscillate from to and fro, you're going to see people get extremely bullish at the top side and extremely bearish at the bottom side. As fucking always, this market is designed to frustrate. It is, it is designed to 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 be <laughs> to be to be as uh, as difficult as possible and in this case right here i imagine this is going to be pretty damn frustrating for a lot of people uh myself included in this case well well less so as well it's actually quite a nice trading range but things are slowing down which is a little bit more uh, annoying i suppose as we were kind of blessed with some very very volatile movements for the past couple weeks now things more or less moving at a snail's pace in comparison anyways uh with that said as far as the front mates go do we still see negative rates on bitmex yes we do actually negative not point out four four percent which is rather interesting all of the exchanges are right around parity so i i don't put too much weight on this right now it would be a little bit more in the sign of hey still look at the trend right now and as long as the four hour trend does remain to the upside I actually do think that this ends up being a bit of a trap trap of course it is right around that precipice so if bitcoin does really start to falter below i believe it's about 36 500 or 36 600 ish region yeah i would be looking for a move to the downside of the range and bitcoin probably tries to put another base somewhere at low 30s uh, somewhere between about 33 and 35 i'd imagine but you know still a bunch of things remain to be seen and with a weekend coming up it's kind of difficult to make any like forthright uh major like major uh calls uh, not the right word to be using but uh, but, you know, but looking for like, you know, actual momentous moves in the markets to be happening. In fact, if we'd actually do see a move to the upside over the weekend, that would really, really sort of on my view that this next move to the upside will be a bull trap and Bitcoin does ultimately come back down somewhere around 35,000 bucks. Problem is, this is going to, <laughs> does, does Crown still do Dan from the Chart Guys impression? Welcome to crypto.chartguys.com, your cryptocurrency leaders for, <laughs> for, I don't know what the fuck they do anymore. Are they still around actually? Uh, you know, you know, all jokes aside, actually, they were, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they were pretty reasonable um, but as we can see you know over the long period of time global funding rate continues to trend to the downside anyways um anything else that i wanted to be speaking about double bottom on the fear and greed index so we're going back up just kidding uh but more importantly let's go check out the put call mark because there actually is something really really compelling over here okay so put call market we actually do see extreme extreme open interest now this is what we're looking for this is why i was saying before we're not really concerned with like something around the 100 or, or even 200 level uh, like we saw earlier this week around the, I think it was like $36,000 strike and uh, $39,000 strike. Now we're seeing significant amounts of interest in the $26,000 strike puts and also the $40,000 strike calls. So what's going on right here? Well, uh, this would look like covering up positions to myself and preparing for a range. And if we are actually going to be looking for a break of 30,000 bucks, this would probably be it right here as this does look, well... I don't think that they're buying the strangle in this case, especially with the June expiration. Very, very likely over here is that one's the big one getting played. Perhaps the December's as well, but overall what i'm looking for here is i'm looking for a range in june now uh probably uh, probably with a bit of a cap at forty thousand bucks so i would i would actually feel quite com comfortable saying that bitcoin neither closes above forty thousand bucks at end of this month nor below probably thirty but uh thirty thousand bucks as well again can we get moves outside of that range in the interim yes absolutely i i, I do think it's probably a little bit more likely to get a move uh, above the top side of this range in this case but ultimately uh i would be looking at that as essentially pin risk coming into expiration which we got another i don't know about uh, actually this month just started so quite literally one two 
three uh working on four weeks actually so it's, it's not happening anytime soon actually hold on no 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 Tw uh, 25th of uh, june so it is uh one two three weeks away ah fair enough all right a little bit closer than what i would have expected but uh but i guess uh, yeah we do see friday's kind of falling a, uh you know on a weird uh day this uh th this uh this month here anyways um okay sweet i do see a few chats coming in i will try to uh i will try to remind you once again um if you do say any chats before like we get in the actual altcoin analysis and uh, or at least through the bitcoin analysis it's they could get lost here i don't know if uh, i know that uh, is pedro here pedro is here okay nice one actually pedro is uh, keeping everyone safe in safu safu so i'll let it go over there and uh, let's get into charts right now so a couple things going on right here Okay, first and foremost, um, we can see on the lower term timeframes for Bitcoin, we actually do have what would be considered a symmetrical triangle going on right now for CME, which actually I guess I don't have on this chart. It must be on my secondary chart right here, but we got something like this going on. Before people were looking at this, uh, people are looking at this as like some sort of a uh, some sort of a descending triangle. I think it's I, I, I think it was a bunch of Jesus toast until this moment right here. Once we got that rejection around the 21 on um, on, of course, CME. Now we actually do have something a little bit more in place that could be used to base a few assumptions off of. That means that if Bitcoin does break below this bottom side angle right here, which is about thirty six thousand three hundred fifty on CME specifically, then we will have targets and we will have targets very likely. Actually, uh, do I have it over here? I do have it over here. Hey, there we go. All right, that's where it was. <laughs> All right, it's both on a 12 round daily, so I do put a uh, I do put a lot of respect on this one. Anyways, uh, to the downside, obviously this would be implying a target somewhere around uh, just about 32,000 bucks, probably a bounce after that. And I would probably be looking for Bitcoin to try to put another low right there as well and probably rally back up to the top side of the $40,000 range uh, while, whilst maintaining the overall range of frustration, more importantly. By the same token, quite literally, until we break the four hour trend here, it, you know, technically speaking, I should be looking to the upside and I should be looking at this in, uh, as, you know, as an opportunity. Do I feel that way right now? Eh, not really, to be honest with you. But if we do break above the top side of this resolution, which would be about 39500 ish region, I would be looking at a move pretty much right in line with the 55 exponential average right there, which is good confluence as you typically would expect and i imagine if we do take a bearish retracement on this as well that's probably going to be lining up with one of the major pivots here on cme specifically which i really would put a lot of weight on right now and let's see yeah it's right around the 382 in this case so anywhere between about 44 and 45 thousand bucks if bitcoin does break north now before you know i did see that a lot of people are putting like symmetrical triangles or some sort of triangle on these lows i've not been doing that this is actually the first time they've put a triangle on this uh, formation right here because this is the first time they've actually felt like we actually have one in place we actually have three touches to the top side three touches are uh, uh, well not maybe not three touches the bottom side just yet but could be coming in <laughs> it could be coming relatively soon but more importantly the volume signature is really starting to align with this being an actual formation we want to see this tail off from left to right and about that point we'd be looking for resolution so i would say this is looking for resolution statistically speaking uh, about when we're about 75 percent full uh towards the apex here and that's going to be about six seven eight uh of um of june so i believe that would be okay so the six is when the six would be uh not tomorrow not the not the day after that be monday 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 tuesday of next week we've very likely do look for resolution of this formation technically speaking a symmetrical triangle typically is a continuation pattern a little bit more uh probabilities in the side of the trend in this case that would be to the downside on these time frames at 12 hour and daily um however it is kind of a, it, it is more more or less looked at like an equal opportunity uh, formation as well and in cryptocurrency land, I think it's, you know, I think, I, you know, I think it is a lot more closer to 50-50 uh, by my own estimation. I think in, in the direction of the trend, it's like more close to maybe 60 in this case. But uh, overall, you know, I don't think that that's uh, enough, at least for myself, to kind of be basing much off of right now. Uh, for what it's worth, if we, go to, if we do go down to the four hour right here, what do we see? We do still see an upturn right now. And I would be respectful of that as a trader until that it is broken. So looking at this right here, does it look like we, we might actually break this right here right now? Yes, it's very, very possible, of course. Where's our last higher low? That would be right around 37,500. If that happens, I'd be looking for Bitcoin to probably try to a little bit of a bouncy bounce. And if that bounce fails to get uh, essentially fails to get back above the prior high um, before before continuing below that uh, that 35 or sorry, what was it? 36 or 37, 37, five pivot then uh then at that point yes i would be looking for at the very least to move to the downside of the range and that would be implying a target somewhere around 35 5 i believe it was let's see where this actually comes in around and that would be yeah about 35 uh, 350 35 5 ish region on spot price action on cme that would be more akin to well actually we don't have the same sort of thing going on in cme uh yeah it'd be a little more akin to i suppose about 36 5 in this case now i do put the most weight on cme chart right here so I would be very much respectful of that. But until we actually get that downtrend really confirmed on the four, I probably would still hold off on really putting any major trades right now. Is there is there other things kind of agreeing with this? Well, let's look at short-term momentum oscillators and see what they're saying right now, as that is going to help a little bit of the short-term bias. And what do we see? Four hour stokes coming down 39 or sorry, 38,900 or 30, basically 39,000 bucks is the magical number in this case. Three hours going to be, I imagine, pretty much the same thing. Yep, 30, basically 39,000 bucks as well. Buy hourly is what? 
36, uh, or sorry, 38, uh, 700, and hourly is already all the way down there. In fact, uh, 38, 200 is the magical number on this one. So Bitcoin is under pressure right now, and it is, you know, from a mental model perspective, it would be saying that, uh, hey, we probably do actually break this trend right here. And if you do see that lower low below this, uh, again, 37, if you're looking at an hourly, about 37, 250, I do think a four hour is probably a little bit more formidable to be using in this case, and that would be, again, 37, uh, 500, actually, then, well, yes, I would be looking for Bitcoin to dump down, but I'm not necessarily calling like a major move to the downside. Now, I know that there's a lot of people in the chat right now who are saying sell bitcoin sell 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 we're going to twenty thousand bucks look can that happen yeah absolutely but it, is that like the first thing that i look for if um you know in a formation like this no you go step by step go level by level because again the most the most likely thing to happen in this case is probably just go sideways within this range between thirty thousand and forty thousand bucks the same shit that we've been saying for a while now and uh and i still would be cognizant of a move at some point into i really do want to see a move into like the mid to deeper forty thousand dollar territory if we are going to move lower i would expect something like that first in order to get a bull trap and then you get the rocket fuel for downside liquidity but in this case right here we're still kind of you know we're still kind of just awesome within this range so i don't really actually put too much weight on it but what we should do right now is we should actually just mark off that last little higher low right here and that will be this point right here actually let me get off the i don't want that one i want my horizontal ray there we go and actually it's going to be a little more vis visible and a little bit more obvious on spot price action as well we're just going to move this baby up right here Oh, we can even just move it to this uh, to this last uh, or about two lower highs ago. But it's looking, you know, it's looking like it will keel over right now. We actually already took out the wick low of this area right here. So if you are an aggressive trader, you would already look at that as confirmed, and you would be looking for further downside from this region right now. And again, targets uh, to the downside going to be somewhere around about 35.5 for that short term. I'd be looking for a bounce off that, and then hold your breath because if we actually do start to break that level, well, like we looked at before on CME chart over here, that will have a measure move actually a little bit further down. Once again, uh, not towards like 20 or 25 thousand bucks just yet. Yeah, but it would be happening right around about low thirty thousand dollar region, thirty one to thirty two thousand bucks right here. So I would be cognizant of that. But uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I do think that this move is a little bit. Um, well, I don't know. Do I even need to have an opinion on this move right now? It's it's about to tell us exactly what it wants to do uh, in this exact moment as Bitcoin does come down and uh, and start to actually aggressively move to the downside here. Let's see what the twelve hour says as well. Yeah, twelve hour showing thirty six thousand bucks as a magical number. If that one really starts to turn down, I would be pretty damn concerned with this. But uh, typically speaking, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for uh, BBWP, a volatility based indicator over here, to continue to move to the downside. I also want to remind myself that at this point as well, if Bitcoin does come down here let's um, let's let's do another perusal of the hash ribbons indicator one of the three pieces that i'm looking for to really denote like a macro low on bitcoin do we have three pieces in uh in order just yet we have maybe one of them almost all the way there the hash ribbon signal is obviously not there just yet it's about three days away on an estimation now that is subject to change obviously because we are essentially making a forecast on moving averages in this you know in this case so it is you know it's going to be rel relatively responsive uh to recent price act or i guess the hash rates uh, and how that kind of operates around but ultimately that plus trend are the big three things that I'd be looking for. Of course, there's more that, you know, if you want to be super diabolical with it, you certainly could do. But I think that that's like the three easiest things to remember until we have those things. in, it's really un, um, it's un-American. No, it's unwise to be calling like a major macro low. And, uh, and Bitcoin can stay within this 30 to $40,000 range for, uh, you know, months, really. In fact, I believe that would be the pretty much the healthiest thing for it to do, uh, you know, over summer here is to remain within this range and just frustrate the shit out of moon and doomers because this market has been so, 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 so generous. Uh, for the last six months, last six, seven months, just going straight to the upside. I mean, realistically, you might even say for the last year or so, going all the way from, you know, 5,000 bucks to 60,000 uh, bucks plus. So realistically, right now, we actually did just take out yesterday's low, which is actually rather, uh, rather concerning right here. So it is looking like we actually will destroy that trend on the four hour. I do think in this case, it's probably going to be uh, warranted to be a little bit more on the aggressive side. Uh, if you are looking for a closure, we're going to, we're about to get one in about 43 minutes. And, uh, oh, actually, no, this six hour right here. Let's go to the four hour, uh, four hours, way, way the fuck far away. Let's see if the two hour already did it no two hours isn't done just yet but again we we have already taken out the wick low in this case so if you are an aggressive trader you know you'll look at that as an entry and you'll be looking at a target again somewhere just below about thirty six thousand bucks somewhere somewhere probably in like the mid 35 region um and probably and, you know again i would be looking for a bounce there to be fair i'm not calling like a major breakdown on bitcoin there's no major breakdown to be spoken about just like there's no major breakout to be spoken about as long as bitcoin's below forty one thousand bucks there's no major breakout to be spoken about to the downside as long as bitcoin's above i think it was uh 35.5 was was that right was that right right here uh, let's see 
let's see yeah about uh yeah about uh, about about 35.5 yes and again when i do say a major breakout to the downside the next target would be about 31,000 32,000 dollar base so i would also be simultaneously looking for a bouncer as well anyways my main message today is i wouldn't really get uh, too excited about both the upside or the downside short term though looks like we might have a little bit of a shifting of trend as it's uh at, you know as it would have it anyways um there's a few other things that i wanted to go over yes okay traditional markets right now we are seeing traditional markets i imagine come down with it yes indeed yesterday yesterday was a pretty dastardly day i do think that it will spend some time going sideways here obviously but ultimately um ultimately you know if this thing's going to break down i don't think that it happens this week I, I you know i think that our downside's a little bit limited this week to be honest with you uh weekly just kind of testing down to the 20 simple right now is typically going to be a bought buy for the most part and if this thing is going to actually collapse down it probably happens next week uh earliest if i you know if i uh, if i had to imagine but there are a few things to be aware of right here we do have a quarterly close coming up at the end of this month obviously and that is going to look a little bit hairy if this thing does close below about 13,250 to 13,300 ish region. And if that does happen, we will start to look like we actually have a real top in place for NASDAQ. And if that does happen, well, seeing as everything else is correlated with these markets, I imagine it's probably not going to end too well for uh, for everything included. As pretty much everything in this, uh, you know, everything in the world is kind of tethered together um, to use a bad, a bad turn of phrase there. Uh, SPY futures, uh, say, uh, actually, certainly not as dastardly here. In fact, SPY would say, hey, hold up for a second here. This is uh, still okay. But short term, it does look like ones have a little bit of downside similar to bitcoin in this case as we do to get a yet again another rejection on the four hour right there so ultimately i want to now match this up with what we're seeing on dixie the dollar index and see if this one's put in a rally to that 91 dollar level that we spoke about uh coming into the uh, i think it was like last week prior and what what are we looking at right here actually it's exactly fucking there oh just just like goddamn clockwork we do see it right here yes and i do think that this does have a little more upside to go and that will very likely negatively impact you know everything that trades against the dollar it's not like a one-to-one -one relationship obviously i mean this thing moves in like very small increments but it will rattle the markets short term i imagine and looking at this right here again looking towards a rally at you know anywhere around 91 bucks is certainly not out of the question uh this is still looking like it wants to put in at the very least one more bounce one more bounce but the question is how does the long-term macro scale look like because if that does really start to break down then well you can probably you can probably continue to uh, to don the bull horns just generally speaking over the next i don't know like uh probably like half year to a year of that uh, as we do have you know another lower high right here and technically speaking we did close on our lows last month if we do close uh lower than that this month well <laughs> then that's continuation by definition i mean it's already not looking too damn good but having a bit of a uh you know a reactionary rally right here is to be expected and i do think that it will go a little bit higher and how does that affect you know pretty much everything else within this market um you know on the other side well they're probably going to come down just generally speaking not everything obviously that is going to be a bit of a uh you know a bit of a general statement but in but you know blanket statement yes uh, that would put downward pressure on on you know and everything else that trades against it and with that in mind we also want to be checking out the quarterly as well because we're going to get a closure here and if this does yeah, it still looks pretty shitty right now, but uh, a lot of days left to go. Let's see, what if we did close above 91 bucks? Would that still be damning? Um, yeah, it would still be pretty damning. <laughs> so, so fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm really I'm really struggling to find like a more uh, long-term bullish view on Dixie over here as I do start to shift my own dollars into euros instead. I think the six month really nails, uh, you know, really puts a nail in the coffin right here as well as we do have quite literally a downtrend already in motion with your high right here, your low right here, lower high right here, and we already closed on lower lows. So it must be, it must be, you know, and you know, a, well, a trend reversal in this case. Um, so long term, I would still remain angled downside uh, to Dixie. But in the short term, does that mean that we can't have rallies? Well, of course not. In fact, like I said, I, I do think that this one will rally up somewhere around 91 bucks. We're pretty damn well. I guess, I guess we're not that close there right now. About we got up to about 90, 60, uh, anywhere around 90, 80 is extremely likely. But uh, I'd even say just above 91 bucks um, is probably within the cards as well. And then and then look for the end of this month to really like confirm these sorts of uh, you know these sorts of trend continuations as we'd expect to see some sort of a rejection, maybe just above 91 bucks, uh, so to speak speak so uh, I'm curious what the daily looks like. Yeah, the daily looks like once more from here. So it probably does continue from here. If that does happen, well, what do you got to be looking at on Bitcoin? You got to be looking at Bitcoin, probably uh, probably destroying this short term trend right now. So with that in mind, it should be a pretty eventful day for the <laughs> for the love of fucking God. Give us some actual opportunity here as traders. And let me just make sure that uh, I got everything operating well over here. OK, I do. Let's also 
let's also turn this back on over here. Okay, I think we're good to go over there as well. I'm gonna see how deep we are into this uh, video already. All right, already 20 minutes. I do have to remind myself, I will be leaving somewhat early, or at least I know that I can't be on for more than like an hour and a half from this exact moment. Uh, so, so I'll do my best to be adherent to that. But uh, in the meantime, yeah, we can start talking about uh, some altcoins, I suppose. I do wanna get back on over to uh, to 12 hour and daily BBWP for a second here though. Uh, we are still seeing it come down and I wanna see this come down preferably below about 20 percentile. So we do have all the other three metrics in place. We did hit 100 percentile right here twice, actually. Jesus fucking Christ, that is loud, man. That is loud. Um, and uh, we did, or sorry, we did hit a, we did hit 100 percentile here a couple times. We did get below the moving average, and we do have a negative slope on that moving average. I really want to see this come down below 20 percentile, preferably, and the lower the better. I mean, if this gets back into single digits, that's really at the time where you would be looking for that next major low. So I'm still waiting on some, you know, some some signal uh, showing that alongside what we saw on March 2020 dump as well. The way the fuck back on over here. And, uh, and that I want to see that accompanied by a higher low in price action plus a hash driven sig uh, signal. That's at the point where I'd be more comfortable calling like a major, perhaps even macro low. And, uh, and then we can move on from there. Anyways, um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna pull back up some of these charts over, or some of these chats over here. Frozen, Mr. Pedro's got it on lock. Absolutely love him, man. <laughs> Anyone tell you you look like Jason Mansuzakis? I don't know who that is, but uh, sure, I'll look it up right now. <laughs> it's probably a simp. Probably a simp says says my girlfriend. Well, sir, you're with what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I find this offensive, sir. I no longer want to speak with you. Uh, let's see what let's see what else Pedro has. Uh, Abbott Dynamics says, "Hey, brother, good uh, good to see you. Good to see you too, man. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, yeah, I man, it's been, definitely been a bit of a crazy week right there. Hope you and Elsa are well. Yeah, we're doing well, man. It's all good. Got to say another thank you for all the knowledge and uh, well, hey, man, my pleasure, man. Uh, haven't been live, but lighting up the Discord. All right, sweet. <laughs> good to see, I'll see you in there, man. I'll see you in there, and uh, good to see you still around. Scott Carney says, "NOK ascending triangle on weekly broken. Let's see. So Nokia." This one, all right, I remember we were, we've been looking about this one for a while. Is the ascending triangle broken? Well, first off, um, yes, uh, but that was broken a while ago. And also, it's not an ascending triangle. It's just, a re it's just, it's just an accumulation formation on the lows right here. Uh, if you want to be super exact with it, it's like a complex head and shoulders with a double right shoulder. But um, is it broken? I mean, it broke a while ago, man. I, I don't really know what you're talking about right here. Maybe you're on like a very low time frame. Maybe you're looking at this right here. In this case, yes. Uh, also, you would, this would also be considered broken. You already hit the move. So uh, I would be looking for a bit of a pullback based upon the 377 right there. We're already there. Uh, but ultimately, I do not think that this one's done. I do think that this one will move higher. The the the, uh, the major level that I'll be looking at is probably like six and a half bucks. But uh, after we hit that first target right there at about 580, 590-ish region, you know, expect a short-term pullback, reaccumulation, very, very likely as long as it does remain above about five bucks and then i look for the next stab up to about six and a half that's the big one though that's the big one for me all right uh frank saints hey what's up frank saints uh i back tested this death cross uh 21 200 ema on bitcoin usd always produced 20 to 40 dump from day of cross happened but this time is different lol thoughts yeah i mean we were speaking about this um at the beginning of this week and at the end of the last week you're talking about this cross right here and yes i have brought this up now the thing is with this cross uh i do respect this one quite a fair bit um, but there's a couple things with this one that do make me still consider that Bitcoin could have first an initial move uh, to the upside on a bull trap and then move to the downside. Let's actually keep all these in right here and maybe, yeah, we'll keep all, all four of these in right here. So what we're focusing on is the yellow 21 in the purple 200 exponential average. The 200 simple, by the way, has already crossed the upside of the 200 exponential average, which is not necessarily a good sign, you might say. <laughs> what, what you, uh, and, and the reason why I say this is because if you know how these things are calculated, exponential moving averages essentially put more weight on recent price action. So if that is dipping below the 200 simple, both the very high period, period moving averages, then well, <laughs> well, let's just go look at the last one. That that one actually happened as well. Um, also, it looks like some hidden bearish evidence also populated itself here too. That would be quite devastating if that does indeed happen. Anyways, uh, when was the last time we saw that cross happen? Yeah, right in over here and uh, in a very similar situation as well. So uh, so basically, oh, let me get on to the topic at hand exactly as you were uh, postulating it. And let me just turn this volume down right here because it is getting a little bit fucking annoying too. Anyways, um, okay, so you're talking about the yellow 21 and the purple 200. I want to incorporate actually all three of these right here, and, I'll, and, 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 and we'll show uh, soon enough why, and also the 377 to the downside. As you can see, Bitcoin is base, basing off the blue 377 as all of these are getting essentially a bearish posture cross. Anyways, let's pull back and let's see what the last few examples of this have done. Well, the last example to the upside was actually <laughs> really at the flip of the macro cycle right here, right around 8,500 bucks, and <laughs> that did not let go of its grip until, well, in fact, right around here, which is rather interesting. Anyways, let's find the last downside cross. Well, it would be right around here, and this is actually rather similar 
similar uh, to what we're doing as well. Bitcoin went on a, um, you know, three to four X run from about 4,000 to 14,000 bucks, right? And then what happens after that? It goes through about a three to four month long consolidation. This would be also considered distribution right here. This would be a descending triangle. I mean, pretty damn simple stuff. And then what do we get? We got our first sell off. First sell off is what? It's about from high to low. Very, very similar actually to what we're looking at right now. In fact, 40%. Now, on a wake-to-wake -wake basis, Bitcoin did do a little bit more than that on this current downside, did do about 50%, but you know, somewhat comparable in this case, uh, slightly different magnitude. Anyways, the big focus is on this right here. Bitcoin rallies up off the blue 377 exponential average into this cross, all of them having the exact same posturing as what we're looking at right now as well. Now, here's again what I'm thinking though. I do think Bitcoin is going to, you know, at the very least, try another move to the upside. It, we need to see like an actual bull trap if we are gonna move further to the downside. I don't think that we've seen it just yet. It's been a little bit too easy and you see a little bit too much um, exuberant irrationality on both sides in this case, you know, with both the bulls getting complacent and the bears getting, well, the bears also getting complacent as well. But at the end of the day, the, tr the daily trend is down. The weekly trend still remains to be broken for the time being. But my point is here is that the next rally, I really do, you know, I really would be looking at this as, you know, a major, 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 major risk. You'll also notice if we put on a, uh, a bearish retracement on the fibs here, I imagine where do we find that next high? actually between the 0.5 and the 6.8 in this case, uh, just above the 0.5, almost to the 6.8. And uh, and again, that's kind of where I'm postulating on Bitcoin as well. And I believe that same sort of similar area to what we're doing to what we're dealing with right now would be about 47 to 50,000 bucks. So I still do look at this area as rather risky. Again, I would certainly not be surprised at all to see Bitcoin come down here, put another rally in, boom, come back down again, base out around, you know, mid to low $30,000 region over the course of months, uh, realistically, I mean, perhaps all of summer. And then and then if it wants to actually try like a real move to the upside, then we can use uh, quite literally about 50 thousand bucks as that next major continuation point we can do in the, an, a, another example after that as well this one also very much pertinent to what we're looking at here you can see bitcoin does get these crosses bounces off the 377 on the next test again keep in mind our 377 is right around the current low structure at about i think thirty two thousand bucks and this one does uh, does initially dump so it's a little bit different and, and the other one actually did initially dump as well to be fair um but we don't always see that to be fair as well uh the big thing is though is that move to the upside after that that is your bull trap right around the 200 simple which continues to rise and uh and then we get the real move to the downside and that's your real move right here from about 10,000 all the way back down to base at about 6,000 bucks 40 percent move you know rather rather impressive right there and by the way i imagine i imagine if we do take a bearish tracement on this as well guess where we topped out around the 618 in this case so uh, you know ra relatively similar again after a major 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 move to the upside we can do one more example i believe there is on the books here that is of, of particular interest and yeah it's right here actually um it's right here yes okay so we do see the 21 cross on the downside of the 200 simple and 200 exponential and average also getting that same cross between the purple and the white bitcoin bases off the 377 once again uh, takes about, you know, this is from April to when? To May. April to May, so about a month here, and then puts in that failed bull, or uh, sorry, not not a failed bull trap, a very successful bull trap, right around the 200 simple in this case as well. And guess what? I imagine if we do take this, let's take it from the high of this, and uh, whoops, that's not going to be correct. Let's take it from the high of the actual prior consolidation. Uh, this one a little bit weaker actually to top out of the 382 in this case um, but ultimately all of these do seem to have relevancy right here now did we hit the 382 in this case no we did not now here's the thing if you are looking for a bull trap which again i do think is rather likely regardless of whether bullish or bearish i think that this is going to take a long time um it's very 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 rare that you get a bull trap around your 236 and that is about as high as bitcoin has gotten on this you know what would be i suppose if you're bearish right now your you know your bull trap for this for this time and moment was a little bit more likely at the very least as a 382 and that's like a, a rather weak market if you do get rejected there that's currently at around forty four thousand bucks or just above forty four thousand bucks and what you traditionally get you know in a more strong market is somewhere around the 618 or the 0.5 and I, I still would stick with that overall i do think that bitcoin does break about forty thousand bucks before breaking below thirty thousand bucks if it's even going to do that to begin with so let's set out some criteria here as well um, again, uh, keeping in mind that the, that you know the short-term time frame uh, trend is only is only relevant to the short-term time frame trend, but can have implications with us coming back down to the downside of this range. Anyways, I would be looking at the 377 right here, which is actually currently yeah 32,500, which would be in line with that measure move if Bitcoin does break this current triangle to the downside. I would be looking at that as yet again to bounce price action or somewhere around there. May, you know maybe Bitcoin does dip a little bit lower, maybe down to like 30,000 or, or 29,000 bucks. Definitely possible, but as long as it's just a wick, I would still be looking 
looking for a bounce off this region and then your likely bull trap does come uh, if that's going to happen again we actually still have not necessarily confirmed this just yet on a time frame that i think holds you know any significant amount of weight like a four hour and you know e you know even on even on like a minimum time frame like a two hour have we done it just yet no we haven't this one could do it for me though uh, if we do close below here we already have a wick below you know it depends how aggressive you want to be um not necessarily for me in this market right now i'm i'm you know i'm 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 basically positionless not looking to trade this at this current moment in time we got the fucking elon musk market going again as you know anyways um uh, let me put back on all these babies and then we'll get back to the comments here let's go one uh nope we don't want that one nope we don't want that one either we want this one and this one there we go okay lovely all right let's see um 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 oh my god i just missed a shit ton <laughs> i just missed a shit ton of them all right sweet uh <laughs> by the way i'm not the real scott bum rhino you're not actually scott carney but your name is scott carney what the fuck man what is this imposter bullshit oh i see derek i'm in here too what's up derek good to see you man criterion if you will yes exactly uh okay okay uh mike crook says um hey hey Crown, can you check out piton it's downtrend on the one in four hour daily price targets okay uh, Peton. Oh, this is Peloton. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I, I recognize this name now. Yeah. Breaking down obviously on the hourly. And I imagine what, what other the time from GS or I think you asked for like for one and four kind of a weird, uh, well, I guess it's, I mean, it is traditional markets. Oh, what do you know? Remains with the downtrend kind of crazy there now, isn't it? Anyways, looking at the daily. Okay. Okay, um, if you do start to close back down below the 200 exponential average, this will inevitably get a death cross. Now, it's not happening today or tomorrow, but this would be really the area that I'd be cognizant of here. Now, with that in mind, you do see, well, you do see pretty obvious thing going on right here too. Um, you know, as far as structure goes, what, you know, what do you say about this? Well, obviously it's, you know, it's a downturn in this case. The question is, how do we end the week? And the weekly, which you did not ask about, is actually not under, uh, you know, under that much pressure. So if it does come back down to about 96 spot 69, I would be looking for another bounce there. And yes, I do think that it comes down a little bit more today. But the question is, do we close below the 200 exponential rate average or not? If we do start to close below the 200 exponential rate average, I will consider this, I will consider this essentially a trap right here too. And you're very likely to get a death cross and you're very likely to retest these prior lows over here. Um, I know you didn't ask about yeah i know you didn't ask about the weekly but we do need to go to that time frame in order to kind of uh, dissect this one in this case uh but long term i mean this technically is a head and shoulders right here this has not been destroyed and that actually does have measure moves much 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 lower i don't know how accurate that's going to be seeing as it is kind of a long-term thing and you know sometimes those do get thrown by the wayside as time goes on but uh this price action right here is you know looking like yet again another lower high so at the end of the day it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to love for right now it's kind of hard to love Anyways, uh, Dan K says, hi, uh, hi Crown, uh, Matic BTC, please. All right, let's see how, let's see how uh, Matic did here. As Matic was one of the better actors, yes, but I actually checked in on the US dollar valuation. Oh, whoops, you wanted BTC. I actually already did check out on the uh, US dollar valuation before I did the stream uh, for like the first time ever. And, uh, and it's quite, it quite interesting to see that it actually did break down. And uh, we're seeing the same thing on Matic BTC over here as well, as you would expect. Now, I would be looking for this one to trade a little bit lower overall. It's very likely to bounce here first. How high does it bounce get? Let me just get rid of this right now because it's not relevant to what we're speaking about. Let's actually do one of these for the time being. Yeah, do you think that uh, you're going to bounce here first? I don't know how high do you bounce back up? Maybe 4750-ish region. It's certainly not out of the question. But is there a likely continuation of the downside overall? Yes, I do think so. I'd, I'd be looking for this one to ultimately tag somewhere around like 3,700 Satoshis first uh, before trying to put in like a, the next major low in this case, as this one's just drooping on over, which does not look pretty at all. In fact, you might have already even seen the bounce. We did say I did say a bounce from uh, about where we're at right now to where is that daily level? Uh, that would have been right around 46.5. Yeah, it looks like we did get pretty damn close there. I, you know, I still think that it could maybe maybe put in, uh, maybe, maybe try for one more short-term bounce here. Uh, but ultimately, this one does want more downside, and I'd be looking somewhere around about 38 to 3,700 Satoshis and look for some bottom in action right there. I do still like the long-term on this one, uh, well, at least versus the US dollar, to be fair. I don't know about the Bitcoin pairing here. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Um, yeah, weekly, uh, you know, I, I don't have any major issues with this, with this chart long term, honestly, if this thing comes down to like 37, 38, I'd actually be looking at that as an opportunity in this case. Uh, again, still one of the better charts in cryptocurrency land. I'm never going to hate something that just closed on new all time weekly highs, in fact, too. So, uh, yes, I do think that there is short term downside here, but I would be looking for this one to get picked up somewhere around there to be fair. All right, cool. Um, what else do we have here? What else do we have? All oh, right. Uh, okay, got that one, got that one, got that one. Okay, uh, Dan K says, hike around uh, Matic. Wait, nope, we already got that. Uh, Adam Halcombe says, uh, gold one one month and one day. Okay, do you mean like gold, gold, or gold, the ETF? Now, I, uh, they, I mean, they're pretty much going to be the same thing. I imagine you probably mean spot gold, but correct me if I'm wrong, as uh, they're going to be completely different if that's not the case. And yeah, we do have a bit of a local high going on right here, too, on the weekly. 
daily same thing we'll be looking for this one to trade down and try to put in a low somewhere around like 1850-ish region i do think that this one does try up higher uh, somewhere around about 1950 over time and let's see how the monthly close as well i think that that one actually had a pretty damn good one yeah so short term yeah i'd be looking for this to come down somewhere around 1830 maybe 1840-ish region so just a little bit a little bit of short-term downside and then try again to the upside this this one actually would still remain long-term bullish on at least in its current posturing we do see a, a monthly uh, uptrend right here and ultimately yes i'd still be looking somewhere around like 1950 to 1975 um you know after after this next downside move as um I mean, it's, I mean, it is still, I mean, <laughs> we are still getting lower highs on the daily year too. Not, not the best right there, but ultimately I would be looking you know, I, you know, I'd give it a chance right here. I, I really like the monthly and that does hold a lot of weight on something that's been around for as far as uh, trading view is concerned about 06. So uh, I would put a lot of weight on that. And we do have hidden bullish divergence right there as well. Although you already got the easy move on that one. Personally speaking though, I do think it will trade back up to like 1950 or 1975 um uh and then uh, and then we get to play the game again how about that <laughs> uh basil jabber says hey bro hope you're having a good day yeah man it's decent i didn't get the best night of sleep and i got a doctor's appointment coming up in just a couple hours here but it's all good man anyways uh targets xrp two hour four please god damn god damn targets are at it again uh let's see what let's see how xrp is holding up right here where is my xrp there it is 96 cent imagine it's coming down alongside everything else because you know how everything works within this market they all work together and what do you know looking like a another failed reject or uh, not not a failed rejection a very successful rejection thus far four hour have we already taken out the trend i would say in this case you probably could be aggressive with this one looks like it does want to come down to about 90 cents or so just below 91 cents in this case um i'd still give it a chance alongside bitcoin as well you know i do want to really um sound the horns as, as to like i don't want to get too bearish here yes there is short-term downside very likely implied momentum oscillators and uh, and trend short term is starting to revert itself but um, you know, how much downside would I be looking at this one? I mean, where's your next level? It's going to be right around here, like just around 90 cents or so. See what the daily is showing as well. Yeah, daily is actually just all air back down to the 200 in this case. Now, if, if this thing does come back down to about 80 cents, I would be looking for a bounce there. But this is going to start to look like an actual this the actual bull trap. Um, and maybe we're just in a really, really weak market, uh, which is possible, I suppose. I still think it's a little bit less likely. I do. I, I would still give this uh, this market a chance here. Um, let's see what four hour momentum also is looking like as, as well. Yeah, four hour TSI turning down and actually rather aggressively there too. Four hour BBWP. Oh, OK, this is actually rather damning. This is what I do not want to see, or at least this is what you would not want to see if you want to be bullish right now. We see that uh, volatility is actually expanding right now as trend is essentially. Well, <laughs> well, you can already see yourself, man. It's already it's you know, it's already coming down. Um, um, we also had a little bit of bearish divergence at the top right there, but that's, um, well, yeah, the easy part of that move's already played out. Let's see how much that one already got. Yeah, 9%, not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, man, I, I'd, I'd be looking for this one to come down. Now, what are the time frame are you looking at right there? Uh, two and four hour, I, I think that pretty much gets it for what it's worth right now. Um, hard to be, uh, you know, hard to love this one as long as, as long as it's below that 105 pivot. Really wanted to see it take it out, uh, take out that level yesterday. We did not take that level out yesterday on, a, on you know, on a closing basis. So uh, down we go, sirs. Down we go. Anthony Nicholson says, I love Ho. <laughs> Cardano, don't give a fuck about Bitcoin or Elon. That's all. Uh, I'm curious to see. Is that true? First off, um, let's see. Let's see. Is Cardano actually holding up well? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's still one of the better charts, uh, all things considered, but is it, uh, is it immune from Bitcoin's moves or, or Elon's tweets? It looks like no, it looks like no. Anyways, uh, I would be looking for, I would be looking for a bounce here on Cardano, to be fair. I mean, it is coming down to some major movement averages, uh, you know, as we speak right now. Also the four hour 200 simple, you know, how high does it bounce back up? Maybe, maybe a 175 ish region. Um, but you know, if Bitcoin comes lower, man, if Bitcoin comes lower to 35, five region, I would be looking for this one to come down, um, you know, somewhere around about one, uh, one and a half bucks. I'd still, I, you know, I still, I still put a lot of respect on this chart, uh, all things considered. But with the weekly coming to a close relatively soon, man, uh, I do not want to see this end with a lot of a wick to the upside in this case. <laughs> Look, not the best, not the best. But again, three day and two day are still more or less fine here as far as structure goes. So I don't, I don't, you know, I, I shouldn't get, uh, you know, I, sh I, I shouldn't uh, really be shitting on this one as much. But um, again, if Bitcoin comes down, it's, I just found it hard to believe that everything else won't really follow. And this one definitely, you know, I, I don't know what chart you're looking at, but uh, this one is certainly not immune from whatever move that you might think is not happening uh, over here. I mean, it's 12 and a half percent down right there. In fact, I think that would be um, more, more than Bitcoin at this point too. What do we have a high yesterday? About 39 down about six and a half percent. So I'd have to respectfully disagree with that, sir. Um, it would appear that the chart would disagree in this case, man. Uh, let's see. Kevin fucking wants to take around. What's up, man? Can you mind? Uh, can you show quick basics on reading MACD? Uh, I actually have a video on that. I actually do have a video on that that is available to anyone um, in the TA101 playlist. Just type in like 
Crown, Mac, D, and then I have some sort of clickbait bullshit title for that. Um, in general, though, I can, I, you know, I, I, can, I can give you the biggest tip that I can give you uh, in just a few seconds down by right here is crossing to the upside or crossing to the downside is not the way that the Mac D is, is supposed to be used. There are several other things that must be considered with it. And, uh, and if you are using it for, you know, just, just, just as simple as that. I would strongly suggest, uh, I would strongly suggest at the very least watching that video because it will help improve your hit rate um, significant. But, uh, you know, to go through the whole explanation of that, I mean, that, that video was like 20, maybe 30 minutes long. And uh, with examples, I don't think that's appropriate to do on a video like this, uh, all things considered. But, uh, but it's there for you whenever you want. Okay, sweet. Um, Anthony Nicholson says, I'd like to buy a W for $2, please. Uh, what's, up, what's up with everyone in these like W's, uh, W's and M's? Uh, these are becoming like the new Mimi within this market. Is this, a, is this an M pattern right here or a W? Um, I think it's neither actually. <laughs> I think it's a Jesus toast, man. I think it's short term down and I'd still be looking for a bounce somewhere in like mid thir uh, $35, uh, $35 region. Um, let's see. Uh, Minner says, no simp. Thoughts on WKHS? WKHS. What do I know this? No, I know SWKS, not WK. What, what the fuck was that? WKHS. Okay, hourly, daily, monthly. All right, man, you are all over the place. WKHS. There we go. Workhorse. And I think we looked at this one yesterday, too. All right, so you're looking at very low-term time frames and very high-term time frames. First off with the daily, and then we'll go to the regular monthly. Uh, <laughs> that's not, That doesn't look like a very da good daily close right there from yesterday. Jesus Christ, man. Monthly is okay, though. I'd give this one the benefit of the doubt all over the long term. I mean, it is a decent chart. How, how far does this go back towards, yeah, July 2010? So we actually do have about just over 10 years history on this one. Look, man, as long as this thing's closing above like 1275 on the macro, I'm not bearish on it, man. I'd just be looking for trend continuation long term. Problem is, though, daily is looking like a rejection right there. And if we go down to the very low term timeframes, let's see. Okay, the low term timeframes have actually helped this, out, uh, helped this one out quite a fair bit. No, this is a breakout and this is actually fine. This is actually fine consolidation, um, you know, right after a breakout, which is to be expected. I've seen no major issues with this thing as long as it's above this pivot right here, about 12, or about, about 13 bucks. And I imagine that's the same level as what I said on the monthly. And it is. Hey, there we go. About 12. Uh, yeah, just under 13 bucks in this case, too. Um, so while I do think that, you know, it could pre perhaps come down there in the short term, ultimately, I respect the breakout until told otherwise. And I, and, I, and I respect the long term trend until told otherwise as well. The signature or sorry, the volume signature right here is, is very much telling uh, as far as the long term goes. The breakout's real. And I would be looking for this one to continue, I don't know, over the next like half year to a year. But short term you're gonna so you're gonna see flippy floppy behavior most likely as this one does look like it's starting to really get a bit more volatile all things considered uh, with like the last 10 years miguel says crown thanks for uh volume answer yesterday all good man uh i'm a noob still so i just have a different question than just asking for coins okay uh so i kind of take the opportunity to pick your brain when uh, i catch you live uh yeah man that's fine um <laughs> you should also just have left a uh, you know a question right there too man uh but sure man yeah uh you know I'm, uh, you know i'm happy to chat about it because uh it also it also gives us some more stuff to uh just just, just like some more breath to the content within this channel. Anyways, uh, hey, good morning to you, Mr. Kelvin. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, Poncho, hey, what's up, Ponchos? My buterol, sir. Exited long last night. Nicely done. Woke up this morning and shorted top of the uh, range. Neck minute, Elon panic. Enjoy your day, sir. Enjoy your day as well. Let's actually take a quick look at Ethereum right here. Here's how he's doing. Um, it, did he actually dump more or less than Bitcoin? You know, to be fair, I actually still don't hate that. People are going to look at this monthly as as inevitable to turn down. I wouldn't look at it as such just yet, but it is. It, it, it isn't looking too hot right there. Yeah, we already took out yesterday's low. That's not looking the best. Uh, what about 12 hour right here? Uh, 12 hour, I would be looking for a bounce first and foremost. Let me actually see what's going on my other screen. Eh, not not much. Um, I would be looking for a bounce here uh, short term. Let's see what the four hour trend's looking like right now. Yeah, we're very, very close to taking out that last higher low as well. And also a couple of highs ago, uh, actually one, two, three highs ago, in fact. Um, so if that, if, you know, if that condition is met, I'd be looking for this one to trade down. That probably happens in line with what we see on Bitcoin as well. I still want to see it confirmed on a full hour. You know, technically speaking, uh, it's not wise to front run a trend, a trend reversal until, you know, until proven in my experience. But, you know, all things considered, like momentum oscillators are certainly against price action right now. So if you do want to be aggressive, not the worst call in my, you know, in my opinion, but I would be looking for a bounce here first and foremost. How high can the bounce get? I think getting back to 27 is rather likely in this case, but uh, but ultimately I'd be looking for Bitcoin on trend. And if we do close again below about 2,700 um, on this next four hour, I would be looking for this one to move down simultaneously with Bitcoin somewhere around about 25, 2,500 low. Uh, let's see what the daily looks like here. Actually, let's uh, let's dial that in. Let's dial that in for a second. I'm just curious where this trend line would come in. 
yeah, may, maybe a little bit below 2,500 or so. Uh, but ultimately, you know, gonna get, uh, gonna gonna essentially follow whatever Bitcoin does in this case. Uh, I'm curious to see what it looks like over here with my regular charts as well. Just do we have any sort of a different read, um, so to speak? And how hard did this one get hit? So Bitcoin Bitcoin's down about six and a quarter percent right now. Yeah, this one a little bit more. So as always, altcoins are going to be a little bit more of an emotional brother uh, in comparison to Bitcoin. Here's what I would say though. Here's what I would say. I would actually be considering this whole goddamn thing a fucking bull trap, or sorry, a, uh, a bear trap, if you see Mr. Buterall close anywhere, really anywhere above the 55 in this case, which is about 2720-ish region. Still possible, yes, we got a long day left to go, but if that does happen, I'd be looking at this as an actual bear trap, and and we're probably going to move to the upside, and then and that's at the point where you do look for that move to about 40000 bucks. But for right now, you know, it's, uh, what is going on right here? M, okay, 92, all right, we're good on that one as well. Yep, okay, sweet. Anyways, um, you know, I, you know, it's, I, you know, it's still kind of hold the horses on, you know, on a major move, uh, at least for the time being. Um, let's see, let me get back to my chats over here. Martin Hunt, oh wait, nope, we just skipped someone. Uh, Julius Kramer says, Matic, uh, Matt, Matt two or Matt USD, okay. Um, maybe you meant Matic, but I'm not familiar with this one. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that you probably meant Matic. We already looked at the Bitcoin pairing. I imagine this one's not gonna be too different here as uh, it's probably already getting hit, hit more hard than Bitcoin as well. Yeah, I imagine this one's already down yeah, about 13%. So certainly not immune to Bitcoin's moves either. And well, you know, what, what was our target on Satoshi? It's probably like 30, what was it? Like 36 to 3,700. Um, let's see what that kind of align with here. Again, I, I'm not bearish on this chart, man. Like this chart, I'm, I, I'm just, I just can't be bearish on a chart that looks like this. Uh, but where would be the level that I'd be looking for? Well, first, thir first things first, I'd be looking for a short term bounce at about 156, probably back up somewhere around like 170. Um, however, where would I be looking for like an actual potential low on this one? Probably somewhere a little bit lower than that, somewhere around like 140 to 135 region. Um, and I'd, and I'd be looking for some sort of bottoming behavior right there. Again, I, I'm just not going to get bearish on something that looks like this right here until we actually, you know, take out last week's low or, or something of that narrative. Uh, I just don't think that that's the wise call to be made in this case. If we go over here to my trending charts, uh, we can put it on a weekly. And as you can see, I mean, this would still just be considered testing the topside trolling band on a trending move. Um, realistically, I should be looking at this as an opportunity, not that I trade this thing to begin with, but, you know, long term, uh, I don't see a major issue with this, to be honest with you. Um, that is long term, however, short term. Can it, can it, you know, can it tag back here? Yeah, absolutely. But does that, does, you know, does that destroy the, the weekly? Technically not. No, not yet. At least it really take Bitcoin to break below. I imagine like 32 or 33,000 bucks before that one becomes like a major issue. Uh, Martin Hunt says, uh, likelihood of trading between range for months versus the bull trap playing out. Well, actually, I, I don't think these two things are mutually exclusive, sir. I'm actually, I'm actually suggesting that they probably happen together. Now understand this is a crystal ball type bullshit, which is not real technical analysis. It's just mostly based off of like prior experience and what, you know, I generally kind of expect from this market, um, all things considered. But let me let me see if I can properly relate what I'm saying right here, hopefully in the most clear way possible, because I know that this can get a little bit convoluted and I don't want, uh, at least for the, like the people who happen to give a fuck, I, I hope that I, I hope that I do this uh, justice. Okay, let me first read your message once again to make sure that I understand exactly what you're saying. All right, likelihood of trading between range for months versus the bull trap playing out. If bull trap, would we expect it within a certain time frame? Massive things. Okay, kind. Uh, okay, so so for the first one, they're not mutually exclusive. In fact, I would be, um, I, I, you know, I'd be postulating that Bitcoin very likely tries for a low here. Ends, I mean, this this is probably going to take like three to four months, man. And we're still in month number one. We're still in month number one, man. So get ready for the get ready for the boringness. This is certainly not boring enough and not slow enough just yet in order to really warrant like an accumulation complete. And uh, keep in mind what you technically want to see if we are going to bottom out at this area right here is you want to see a somewhat reasonably similar length of time that it took to put in the top over here it took about three months to put in the top over here from february middle of february to uh early may we'll call it so f february april may yeah about three months maybe a little bit less than three months in this case now right now we're quite literally in month number one over here so it's still you know a lot remains to be seen anyways my point is and and here's the big message that i can really like have and that i've hopefully been relating hopefully like somewhat clearly over the past uh three weeks here ever since we really got into this range okay as long as bitcoin is between fifty thousand bucks and thirty thousand bucks i consider that just one fuckery range there is nothing macro bullish about well 
well, you can maybe tear that statement apart, but I would not be looking for a trending macro bullish move. Yes, that would be the right way of, uh, of you know, of, 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 uh, of saying this. As long as Bitcoin's below 50,000 bucks right here, that would be the top side of what you would expect for a bull trap in this case, right around the 618 uh, is where you traditionally do get it. By the same token, I'm not looking for a continuation of downtrend to like, you know, major new lows in, 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 and still, you know, 25,000 and $20,000 targets will be viable, but that really only becomes viable to myself when Bitcoin breaks below about 32,000 bucks on a time from that matters preferably i'd like to see a weekly could it could we use a daily i think if you use a daily you'd probably want to see maybe thirty one thousand dollars broken rather than uh rather than 32 because you know we still would be kind of operating on higher lows and con uh, considered um back to uh what was this middle of january but ultimately as long as bitcoin's between that range i consider this whole just one range in activity personally speaking what i actually think is going to happen you're probably going to see bitcoin you know play within thirty thousand to forty thousand bucks a little while longer You'll see maybe another test down to like 30, uh, 34, 35,000 bucks. Perhaps that's what's happening right now. And then I'd be looking for another rally up. I'd be looking for another rally up somewhere into like the mid or deeper $40,000 territory. That rally very likely fails. Bitcoin comes back down, curls back around. And if you see some more bottoming behavior in the low $30,000 region, that's at the point where I really do think that Bitcoin could be putting in a major low. And as far as time wise goes, let's actually elongate this so that it makes sense for, you know, what we're probably looking at, which is about three to four months, basically most of the summer um, uh, in this case, so that's going to probably be somewhere out to like August, September region, something like this. So don't be surprised if Bitcoin, you know, just remains in here, uh, maybe even tags all the way down, like I said, to 32,000 bucks. In fact, even if it closed down there on a daily, I mean, that would be, uh, you know, at, at the very least, I'd be looking for another bounce, especially in line with the 377 in this, you know, in this particular situation. And at that point, I'd be looking for Bitcoin to put in like an anemic rally somewhere around here, uh, maybe the 382 if things are like really, really weak, um, and then come back down and hopefully base out again. That would, that's essentially what I'd be looking for if I'm bullish. Uh, if I'm bearish, I want to see Bitcoin essentially keel on over pretty much as fast as possible um, uh, with a weekly closure below 32,000 bucks, or I think it's it's more like 32.5. Let's actually dial this one in. Uh, where's our where's our opening price right here? Opening price is 32,300. So yeah, we could just say 30. Uh, what 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 uh, what was it? Um, uh, about 32,000 bucks. Also basically where the two, uh, the 55 exponential average averages right here, the green 55. Now, what I would say here as well is that regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish, I, I really do want to see something resembling like an obvious bull trap. And while we did go through the moving average uh, example earlier, and also we went through the uh, bi-weekly MACD example yesterday, where we did see all those bounces essentially get sold into, we still have yet to really seen one of those like, you know, mega bounces that gets everyone back in and everyone like full on gung ho uh, bull horns here so what i'm talking about well i'm talking about a couple different things but let's actually talk about the 55 here because we already covered the bi-weekly macd uh last week but what i'll show you right here is simply this just on the weekly time frame bitcoin on the green 55 x between average has never really been a good thing actually but my point is is that after a mega rally so when i'm talking about like over here after a mega rally oh you know especially in this in this segment over here and then back over here as well whenever bitcoins come down to test the green 55 x between average after that mega rally it has provided an initial response. You see the same thing right here. That was also the, pretty much the same thing as what we looked at on the daily crosses as well. And then that's the one that gets rejected. And that's really the one that does lead into further continuation to the downside. So we see this one right here. We see the same thing over here. Bitcoin comes down to the 55, has an, has an initial uh, very, very good bounce off of it. But this is your bull trap of 2018, right? What do we see in the microcycle before that? Way the fuck back on over here. Bitcoin bases on the 55, kind of similar to what we're doing right now as well. And then puts in its, 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 uh, its anemic bull trap as well. So again, uh, you know, if, if you're the biggest bear right now, which look, I'm not saying that you're wrong to be bearish. It's just, I believe that if you're the biggest bear right now, you're probably still looking for something resembling like an obvious bull trap. And thus far, we haven't had one. I mean, this has been, you know, a decent move about a, about like a $10,000 move from top to bottom. Let's actually, uh, let's actually confirm that about 33,000 bucks, uh, to 41,000 bucks. So actually not even that. Um, realistically, I want to see something a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive. Like the market really needs to get people back on the long side again. Because if you are going to break to new lows in this case, if you actually are going to break below 30, uh, 32,000 bucks and see somewhere down around 25 to 20,000 bucks, you're going to need some sort of liquidity for that. And how do you typically get liquidity in this market or most markets in general? Well, by liquidations <laughs> and, and how, and how do you get people liquidated? You get them fucking over leveraged on the wrong side of the trade. How do we do that? Run things up a little bit, let people, uh, you know, let people People buy into the hype once again in the mid to upper forty thousand dollar territory and then fucking dump it in their face and again like i need to be extremely fucking careful with the way that i relate these ideas because while i am saying this is you know is, is probably a strong likelihood 
I would not say that a bull trap, um, well, let me actually get rid of that one too. I would not say that a bull trap um, within that range immediately means that Bitcoin's gonna break to new lows. I just think that it means that Bitcoin's gonna come back down to like mid to low $30,000 region and then we get to play the same game as what we're playing right now. You know, does this level essentially hold or not? If it does not, well, problems. If it does, well, fine, you know. Um, but hopefully that was cl as clear as, uh, you know, as it can be. We can also do the MACD example as well. I, I think we'll just go through like maybe a couple examples here because I really do want to dial this in and I do want to, um, and I do want to show like what, you know, what, what it should look like, um, especially for this particular asset. So we can see the same thing over here with biweekly MACD. Anytime that we've seen a cross in it, we've seen mega massive moves. And right now we are inevitably going to have a biweekly month, uh, uh, sorry, a biweekly cross to the downside with any sort of a closure below 42,200 by end of this weekend 8 p.m sunday uh, uh eastern standard time it will happen uh if that condition is met which right now we're clean like what eight thousand seven thousand eight thousand bucks below that level right now so it's looking you know at least for right now it's looking rather likely but then again seven thousand bucks for bitcoin can be somewhat of a sneeze anyways go through a couple examples here so the last time that we saw it cross to the downside was when october 2019 well that sounds rather familiar now doesn't it that was when bitcoin was based on the on the 20 simple after this mega rally right here puts in what it puts in a fucking bull trap right around the nine exponential mean average this uh, th this lighter blue one that you do see whereas the time before that right here in 2018 bitcoin comes down to the 20 simple bases off it bounces bounces into the nine exponential mean average puts in a bull trap boom down the next well year year and a half so what are we looking at right here we're looking at something relatively similar yes i mean it did uh, you know it is bouncing it is basing off the 20 simple right now and the nine exponential mean average is where it is uh, 44,000 bucks actually. So, so we did get pretty close to it. Yes. But I'd really want to see something like a little bit more, a little more aggressive if that's going to play out. Um, and again, this will be confirmed by end of weekend, uh, with any sort of a closure below 42,200. Uh, so overall, you know, it's, it's definitely a topic of conversation right now, but, um, you know, all things considered with the, ha with the potential hash ribbon signals and then potentially Bitcoin just, you know, trying for another higher low. Uh, I, I would still, I would still hesitate on like calling like a major breakdown. Like I, I really don't want to get caught up in like full on bullishness or full on bearishness right now. The wise thing to do, at least in my experience, is to be looking for a range and not being caught up in like Bitcoin's always mooning or always dooming. Look, man, you know, the longer that Bitcoin goes sideways, probably the better. You see the same thing over here. Bitcoin goes sideways essentially between what, what was it? October all the way to August. I mean, uh, sorry, that's October 2019 to August of 2020, almost a year. Uh, you know, the same thing on Bitcoin's last major lows over here. Uh, well, I guess not necessarily last major lows, but a major low, about three month to four month long consolidation from uh, November 2018, resolved in basically start of April 2019. I mean, that's, you know, that's four months. Um, and that did produce a pretty impressive rally. Same thing in the past cycle, uh, 2014, 2015, right here. Bitcoin took about almost a year on its lows, I believe. Uh, let's see, between uh, January 2015, that, that should make it easy, and October 2015. Yeah, almost a year right there before really breaking out. Um, so I would say that, uh, you know, the longer that Bitcoin goes sideways here. And, and, and again, for reference, we're not even a month into this right now. We're not even a fucking month into this. Um, but the longer that it goes sideways, the better and the more likely this does actually turn into a major macro low. Right now, it is very much uh, inclusive uh, as it stands. Okay, sweet. All right, hopefully we got through that one. Uh, well, uh, ho 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 uh, hopefully we got through that one. Well done. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, uh, a lot of things going on right there. Uh, Rocket uh, awkwardly says Bitcoin showed a small amount of strength. Can I bet the farm in it? <laughs> Where did it show a small amount of strength? Let's go down to the five minute, baby. It's bouncing, motherfucker. I'm going to be rich once again. I'm all in. Um, even the five minute trend still down to, let's see, what, where is the lowest time frame where we, where we can find an uptrend? Uh, minute, no. Okay, well, we gotta go to, the, go to the tick chart then and I don't have, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, uh, I, oh my God. I don't have high hopes for it, I'll put it that way. Uh, yep, not even, uh, not even the, not even the one range chart. Jesus Christ, nasty, very, very nasty. And the hourly just closed and hourly, technically speaking, has, reversed we do have lower lows now um now i'd be looking for something resembling a lower high and you know if, if that's uh if, the, if that's trade you want to take that's at the, that's pretty much at the point that i'd be looking for four hour looks like it really wants to do it too all right sweet um let's see let's see benny b says hey bro what's up man uh talk about confirmation for s p's top please okay so the problem with s p is that it's actually one of the more stronger uh indices here um now when you're talking about top do you mean like top top like this thing is going into like a macro downtrend or are you talking about like a daily top in this case i mean in, you know in, you know in a daily um operation this one can this one can very easily come down from here to like 4100 but i don't think that's what you're talking about i think what you're talking about is like a macro 
a macro reversal. At what point would uh, at what point would I be looking at this as at, you know as a top? Well, we do have a Jesus Christ dildo in for the month of May, and if we do get, do do take out the low side of it, just even trade below, which is forty twenty nine and a quarter, I would be looking for this one to put in a major correction at the very least down to the nine exponential average. It's going to very very likely bounce out like thirty nine hundred, but ultimately I'd be looking for I'd be looking for this one to come down significantly, like thirty five or thirty six hundred somewhere along along the twenty simple, which is naturally moving up here too. Uh, but again, that's if and only if we take out last months low and let's look at how the quarterly looks here too yeah the quarterly as it stands is not that bad if the quarterly which again closes at the end of this month anywhere below the top side trolling demand which is oh dear lord <laughs> okay this is nasty all right if this one closed below four thousand bucks or even just around four thousand bucks by end of month we would have already taken out the monthly condition and i i would be calling a mac reversal in this one yes um and based off the quarterly can we go can we come down even clo uh even even harder than what i just postulated um no, I'd still be looking at 3,500 and then hold my breath after that and then hold my breath after that. But yeah, man, you know, you know, I'd leave it right there. Uh, so it's definitely potential. Yes. Um, and actually credit to Sanctum for uh, for calling this out the other day. I completely missed it, but uh, but he was 100% right about that. So well done, sir. Well done. All right. Um, Jay Quinn says, will you look at AG X die pair? What the fuck, man? <laughs> All right. I'll try. Um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best, man. All right, let's see. Can I even spell this? Okay, what the actual fuck, Jay? Where where did you find this one? Okay, A G V E W. Oh, it, it is a real thing. Okay, it's a it is a real thing. It trades. Well, okay, I'm gonna guess this is gonna be a gonna be a piece of uh, piece of work here, and it's actually not as bad as what I would have expected. I mean, at least it trades a little bit, but it is a downtrend. Obviously, I'll be putting in another, another lower high right here. Um, well looking like it. it's looking like a yes i don't know man i you know i imagine it follows whatever direction bitcoin chooses here uh four is a little bit short-term top you're probably looking for a move back down to like 350 or 360. now what did you exactly look for uh you did not give a time frame on it so i don't really know where to go with this one uh i really i don't even know what the fuck this thing is trading against dai what uh, what what is that as a base pair that would be my question to you um I mean, look, man, you got lower highs as long as this thing's especially below 550. So ranges are, are a bit capped here. I'd mark this area off. If it does get any sort of a pity rally back around here, I'd be looking, I'd be looking at that as the next sort of uh, lower high in order. For right now, the question is, is this actually showing a little bit of weakness here at this exact moment? I mean, all things considered, no, it's not. Um, uh, you, know, I th you know, I think I'd leave it at that. I don't have a strong opinion on this one, man. Uh, volume is okay. Volume is okay on this one for continuation. I mean, we do see some short-term signs of a bit of a trend reversal, but I mean, we still, you know, we, it, I'd actually be looking for this one to come down short-term and then long-term downtrend very likely remains. The question, the question to myself right now is, is this going to be our next lower high or is this going to be our next lower high right here? I don't have an opinion on it other than that, man. It's, um, it's not my favorite chart of the day. It's definitely not my favorite chart of the day. I'll put it that way. Uh, let's see. Rocky G says, fam, hello fam. How you doing fam? Can we discuss the weekly RSI basing around 48 to 53? Do you still give it a chance? Also, I, uh, also would mean 30,000 bucks, uh, must hold for this. Yeah, that is exactly right, man. So this was something that I used to, uh, whoops, we are not on the right chart. <laughs> we are on the wrong chart for this one. All right, let's take out all of the, um, all the thingies here and let's just look at weekly RSI. Okay. So here's the thing with the weekly RSI in this case, um, look it is hard to ignore this one fact about the weekly rsi we've never seen in a bull market weekly rsi come below this area right here which is actually 40 48 48 spot 07 last week we did close on lower lows than that 44 spot 16 i do think that 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 is worth mentioning here and realistically it's more it's more like a, oh i guess i don't have it here all right well let's let's just mark this this uh this zone off so we'll mark it right here it's going to be about it's actually more like uh just below 55 and then this area right here which is the area that i believe you're speaking about at 48. um we've actually already closed below it man and to be fair we've never seen bitcoin in a bull market that leads to more immediate continuation uh close below this level um actually ever uh and what i'm referencing right here is way the fuck back on in june 2013 and that actually was this segment as you can see so what exactly was the question here do you think do, you, do we still give it a chance i mean <sighs> You know, if you're going to use indicators in that way, uh, well, then you already consider it broken. You already consider and you would consider that as leading towards more downside continuation. Again, there are several things that do point, you know, significantly lower here. Um, I am going to be hesitating to really be on the same side of that as a trader until we really break the $32,000 level. But all things considered, if we also see weekly structure break as well, then it's indicators plus structure. And that usually does not lead to too damn uh, too, uh, too many good things for bulls in this case. 
Um, so I, you know, I'd say it's yet again another point within the Bears' court there, and a big one at that too. I mean, it, you know, it does, it does hold quite a bit, uh, quite a fair bit of weight. Uh, Poncho says also looks like a lot of alter rolling over versus Bitcoin pairs uh, for what it's worth. Yeah, and I imagine we're going to see that on Bitcoin dominance right here. Although we did not see the Bitcoin dominance on the app. Yeah, it didn't really. What the fuck is going on right here? Um, yeah, we didn't we didn't really see it change all that much from yesterday to today. Uh, and as far as the trading view, Bitcoin dominance as well. I mean, it, you know, it does look like it's trying to put in a low right here. And I do think that it will rally up. But I still stick with what I've been saying here until Bitcoin breaks the range. Again, that would be about forty one thousand bucks the upside versus thirty two, thirty three thousand bucks to the downside. I, I wouldn't look for this one to, uh, to to have any major moves, but let's just see. Um, I like looking at Ethereum Bitcoin for the general altcoin gist. And actually, I, I still think that this is completely fine right here. Um, I don't see any major risk with this, uh, you know, as it stands. It is essentially higher low reaccumulation formation. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing tag back up to like uh, 8,000, or sorry, not 8,000, but 8 million Satoshis in this case. Weekly still fine by, uh, by, uh, by me. What about very short term timeframes? Yeah, short short term time frames can come down here, no problem. Uh, back down to like uh, I don't know, just below seven million satoshis, six eight or six nine or so. Um, but uh, but ultimately, I actually do still like this long term. So I I don't know if I'd agree with that, except except on the short term. Yes, on the short term, it does look like we have a little bit of rolling over activity going on. All right, let me just double check over here. Okay, we are good. Let, let me get back to Mr. Pedro as well. All right, go lucky says hi, bro. I ordered the trading book, uh, or the book Trading the Zone. Nice one. Uh, any highlights that you liked about the book? So what I really liked about that book is that it took a step deeper than what a lot of these books typically cover, which are usually like surface level bullshit. I mean, you know, it's good bullshit, yes, but it's just not anything creative. What I liked about Trading the Zone is that he was relating um, deep psychological concepts from like all walks of life and, and, and all different sort of um, studies uh, as well into into the into the form of trading. I think that he actually did something very unique there. That's what I liked about the book. And that's pretty much runs rampant throughout the whole damn book. Um, but if you want something a little more tangible, what did I like about that book? He actually gave a tangible example on how to fucking improve your actual trading and, and, and how to work through your own psychological issues. What did he give? He basically give the, he, he basically gives the same thing that I essentially adopted myself, although I, I'd suggest a little bit more than this. But he said, look, if you're going to try a strategy, what you should do is give it 20 iterations, give it 20 tries, write it down in a journal, record that over time. And that is how you can emotionally start to adjust to like, you know, uh, uh, expecting well results and, and not letting your emotions get in the way as you can document these results over time. And I thought that that was very, very powerful because he actually gave a tangible fucking example where most of these books just talk about like theory and whatnot. And that's cool. And that can be helpful for some people. But, you know, people and myself included need like a roadmap. They need like something hard and fast to do. And so that's what I really liked about the book. So pay special attention to that section because it'll go over exactly what, you know, he believes you should put in. I would add a few things to that. And essentially what I, uh, I uh, a video that I put on this channel um, is essentially mirrored off of that uh, strategy as well. It is the video that essentially, I don't know what it's, what it's titled. I think it's titled like, if you're not a successful trader, watch this video. Uh, it's a clickbait title, obviously. <laughs> clickbait as fuck. Um, but my point is, is that it goes over what I call the trade checklist. So I actually add a lot of things to it that he um, doesn't really discuss in that book. But it's it's based off of his uh, it's based off of his work and just taking it a step further, which I think hopefully is you know is you know is a bit more helpful. Uh, Keegan Keegan Radcliffe says uh, you've been the man since. <laughs> hey man, I appreciate that. Uh, the move down came at a key resistance uh, and six one eight pivot of bearish three drives distribution. Love the channel and hair. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, the move. Came came down at around the 618 uh, area. I'm not sure where you're taking that. From. Maybe you're taking that from the consolidation right here. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can reproduce your results. Uh, it'd be around there. Yes. Maybe if we take Wix, then, then, uh, then you'd be correct. Yeah, it looks, it looks like if we take Wix, you will be correct here. Um, in this case, about 39,000. Yeah, right on the fucking money there too. Um, but I'm taking a wick on, uh, to the upside versus a closure on the downside. So take that as you will. Maybe on a daily, it works a little better. Uh, it would work better on a daily for closures, it looks like. So yeah, um, you know, fair enough. Uh, you should naturally see shit like that. But again, I'm, you know, it, this is only, that would only be relevant to this consolidation right here. I'm looking at the greater formation here. So uh, while I can't get very much bearish, I still, I still really want to see that bull trap. I really want to see a bull trap, a convincing bull trap in the mid to upper $40,000 territory. We haven't really seen people like switch around to getting like full on, Gun, you know, balls to the walls, bullish um, in this market, except for like the, like the true diamond hands, just, you know, megaphones on Twitter who are always, who always seem to have like a, an infinite amount of uh, spare cash to buy, which is kind of, which is rather interesting as well. Um, but, uh, but as far as like the general retailer, I don't think that we saw too many like people get back in. And one of the ways that actually measure this, um, which I actually think works honestly better, maybe even than charts 
is looking at uh, both my YouTube views and then also, um, you know, other, uh, you know, other, uh, more importantly, bigger channels than mine, you know, the ones that have more than 100,000 subscribers. And they've been steadily going down during this period. Uh, there was a lot, uh, there was certainly a lot of interest, um, you know, starting off uh, from November, December, especially, things really started to tick up from here. And for the first initial move down, we did see uh, a bit of an increase in viewership as well. Um, but over here, things have been steadily declining and like decently enough too. By the way, that little experiment that I ran yesterday with, uh, with, with saying, don't forget to like and subscribe and tickle the bell. It it actually fucking worked. Like, l l let me give you a statistic here. My most liked video prior to that video was, I think it had like nine, 900 likes maybe, or, or, or maybe even a thousand likes. That video got 30%, more than 30% more likes than my highest video uh, ever. It's like fucking crazy shit. Like, look, I, I, look, at the end of the day, man, you're going to like the video if you want to like the video. You're going to subscribe if you want to subscribe. I'm, I don't feel that I should be obligated to tell you to do such things because you got to make a decision for yourself, obviously. And, you know, realistically, like if you have to tell someone to do that in order for them to do that then it's probably not a good fit to begin with anyways i need to take i need to make a, ch a check on time right now okay we're still good i still got about uh 50 minutes or so okay cool um okay we got that we got that we got that we got that jv says tesla weekly and monthly please thanks for the knowledge good uh good sir stay hydrated thanks thanks brother um actually i forgot my hydration up today but that's okay my voice is doing just fine right now elsa's on her way too Sir, thank you. Uh, Tesla over here. Let's see. Oh, oh my, oh my fucking lord. Oh my fucking yes, uh, yes, sir. Um, oh my god. Okay, this one actually is gonna get. This one is gonna get that markdown that we spoke about. Like, I think we looked at this one a uh, week and a half ago or so. Um, this one does not look good. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Uh, this is really fucking bad right here. We have a continuation of trend right now. So we do have a reversal on the weekly. Yes. Um, I'd be looking still for a short term move down to about 535. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Elskin. Uh, 535 to 540. Probably another bounce there. But ultimately, does this one get long term continuation on a monthly? Let's check it out. Yes. Yes. I, I would be looking for this one to come down to like 450. Do we have bearish divergence here? We do. We do. Um, wow. We even have three drives of bearish divergence. Yes. I, I mean, at the very least, 450. Uh, very likely a big bounce there. Um, but a lot of the time when you do see three drives of bearish divergence like this on like aggressively higher highs, uh, that that 21 can fail you and you will see a move down to the 55 after that. But I give the 21 a, uh, you know, a chance first. Um, this one is good on a reversal right now on timeframes that actually do matter. There will be bounces along the way, obviously, but uh, the daily closure kind of speaks it all right there. This is your proverbial bull trap for what it's worth um, on this one. Uh, if you can even call it, I mean, this is actually a real bull trap right here, but this is your just complete failure. So yeah, I, I'd be looking for this one to come down, man. Um, let me take another, let me take a sippy sip of this water. Let's see if this, uh, let's see if this brings back some of the old emotions there. Oh, finish water. It's always the best, man. I got to tell you, we're being poisoned in America with both our food and water qualities. The best of the best food, the best of the best water. Is found here in bleak old Finland. Hey, what's up, Nate? Good to see you, ma'am. Can you check out UNFI stock? Uh, not Checkcoin. Okay, got it. For I'm glad that you uh, I'm glad that you notified me of that too. Uh, four hour daily and weekly. Okay, and you're in position at 39 and a quarter. Okay, what what was it again? UNFI. Okay, U UNFI. Uh, United Natural Foods. Hey, speaking of food, um, let's see. So, so you're in at about 39 and a quarter, and you are about uh, about a quarter up right now. Um, look, man, I actually do like this one right here. Hidden bullish divergence off of this reaccumulation formation on a daily schedule, so a time frame that actually matters. I'd treat this as just a, a as just a retest of the breakout for right now. Look, you have a pretty easy position right here. You are in profit. You basically bought the breakout, and uh, and if you do come anywhere down below, I guess this was yesterday's low right here, or especially the or especially the actual breakout low, which is um, what is this uh, thirty eight and a half? Yeah, so maybe maybe you don't want to wait for something like that. Uh, then I would be calling this a swing failure pattern and looking for some downside. There are a few concerning, um, a few concerning things going on with this one. I would say volume signature on this is not really what you would expect on an actual breakout. This one has a clear and obvious. Um, well, actually, no, it, it, it's kind of just. Hold on, let's let's go to a higher term time frame here. Okay, okay, yeah, no, I, I I still like this one, man. This 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 is, this, is a, this has a golden cross going on right here. I play this one to the upside, and I play this one long term bullish as long as it's uh, above the twenty one exponential average, which is actually chasing right now. So that is that that's fine by me, man. Weekly RSI is fine here too. 
you know, look, I, I, I just look at this as a retest of the breakout. If you close below this level by end of today, yeah, you could say that's a failed breakout and you probably work your way down somewhere around the 21 in this case, maybe you reposition. But look, man, I do favor the Golden Cross in this case, and it's literally just one day away from confirming there. So pretty fucking close. And I would be looking at long term targets somewhere around here, 52 and a quarter, maybe super long term somewhere around, uh, I guess in this case, like prior highs. Yeah. Um, and we do see like a change of behavior on the, you know, on the downside over here as well. So, I, you know, I give this one the benefit of the doubt, at least for now. Um, I, you know, I really want to see today's, uh, today's closure, but for now, I just, I, I would just treat that as a retest of, um, of, uh, of the actual breakout in this case. And we do see that daily TSI is turning up as well. I, I certainly don't hate it in this case. Uh, monthly, monthly is a little bit anemic here, but, uh, ultimately it's, I, I don't have any measures with this man. Monthly jewel is still continuation, really fucking aggressive there too. But, uh, so, you know, you will see pullbacks and you'll probably see very aggressive pullbacks too, but I give it the benefit of the doubt in this case. All right. Uh, Miguel says curious about STMX USDT, uh, weekly and daily. Okay. STMX, STMX. All right. So, oh, this definitely, definitely a crypto, <laughs> definitely fucking crypto. All right. Let's see what we got right here. Uh, daily. Okay, this one looks a lot more like a descending triangle to be fair. To be fair, if I want to get bearish, I'll be looking at something like this. Uh, clear and obvious lows right around the 200 simple here. So good confluence right there. Two, two spot three cent, it looks like. You got clear and, uh, clear and obvious declining highs right here. About two spot five, two or more like two spot six, it looks like. Um, okay, okay. So here's what I'd say. Or did you give me a time frame on this one? Uh, weekly and daily. Okay, so daily is actually telling you a lot right now. <clears throat> If the daily, I mean, look, man, if you want to be aggressive with this one, you can. And, and I'd probably be looking for a move back down to about two spot three cent. This is going to imply that Bitcoin does break down a little bit here to somewhere around like thirty five thousand um, bucks. And uh, and any sort of a close today below yesterday's low. In fact, even if you're aggressive, you already kind of look at this confirmed. You'd be looking at this as, uh, you know, as as uh, as hidden bearish divergence right here. And that will have a target back down at the very least to the low side of this formation. Maybe wicks lower. That's fine. But uh, but close. But, you know, probably close somewhere around there. What does the weekly look like? Weekly, we just don't have enough history to really be making too much of anything right here. I mean, technically speaking, your last higher low is like way the fuck on over here. And if you want to be super by the book, I'd say way the hell on over here, in fact. Um, so this one has a <laughs> this one has a lot of space, to be fair. Let's see what the real chart looks like. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's your classic shitcoin chart now, isn't it? Um, I'm curious what the low term time frames look like. It, very, very similar to Bitcoin here. Very fucking similar to Bitcoin. In fact, this one's already kind of destroyed its trend. So, uh, I, you know, I'd, 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 I'd be looking for next uh, next downside move here. And probably, it's, you know, it's really looking like Bitcoin wants to do the same thing as well. Somewhere back down around like 35 or 35.5 region and try for a bounce. Technically speaking, we haven't seen the four hour confirmed just yet, but I believe the buyerly has already done so. Yeah, the buyerly has already done so. And that is uh, and that is clear and obvious lower low. So what do we look for now? We look for, you know, maybe a bit of an anemic rally after the four hour sets. And assuming that that rally does fail to get or, or just gets anything resembling a lower high, which our last high right here is 29th, uh, 250. Then yes, you got a downtrend and targets back down to the low side of the range are going to be initiated. Um, if they're not already, again, it depends how conservative or aggressive you are. The aggressive traders are already looking at that. And uh, to be fair, they do have momentum on their side and they do have uh, short term structure on their side now, too. Dane D says, love your channel, man. Thanks, uh, thanks sir. Uh, can you take a peek at HODL token on BSC charts? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. OK, we got HODL, uh, I guess, versus USD. Is this a thing? Oh, it looks like I can't pull this up, man. Um, or maybe it's this right here. HODL, e oh, my God. Oh, sir, I don't know about this one, man. <laughs> HODL bag. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Oh, maybe it's this? HODL hex? Wait, hold on. What are you looking at here? What are you looking at? No, on BSC. Okay, what the fuck? What am I even... What, what the... What the fuck? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing maybe you want to look at this. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's this. Uh, sir? <laughs> Nothing more to be so very, very terrible chart. Look, man, this hasn't even been around for uh actually it's been around for a couple months here. Wait, what the fuck? Hold on. Wait, what? Okay, this this can't be what you're looking at right now. It hasn't traded since like December? January. <laughs> Holy shit. Shit coins never die, but they might become irrelevant, and this is uh, pretty much the worst thing that can happen to you. Oh, it actually is at zero. It actually is at zero. Not bad. Not bad, sir. Uh, look, I don't know if that's what you're trying to look at, but unfortunately, um, I, I, I am limited by what TradingView does host here, and I, I, I don't believe that I can... What, whatever you're trying to look at, I'm not necessarily certain exactly what it is, so uh, 
you know, feel free to correct me on this one. Feel free to to clarify. Uh, but as far you know, as far as this go, or at least the closest thing that I can find to it, um, it looks like a it looks like an <laughs> it looks like a dead heartbeat, man. <laughs> it looks bad. Hey, what's up, Legend Alley Z's SLV week uh, weekly and uh, weekly and monthly? Sure, ma'am. All right, symbol SLV right here on Arkham. Uh, let's see how Silver is doing. Last time it was still looking good, and I'd still say that it's looking good here. Still going to take some time. Uh, probably a little bit of a short term downside move, maybe to like 20, uh, 24 and a half, 24, 60 ish region. Ultimately, though. I do look at this as a reaccumulation um, after a long-term accumulation going all the way back to 2014 resolved more recently in uh, summer of, of last year it looks like uh, so I, I you know I, you know I, I I would give this one the benefit or it's not the, it's not that I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt I just would be having a long-term bullish bias here uh, this is a clear and obvious uh, sunny triangle going on right here as well you know how much longer can it go in here for um, it can go in here for a little bit longer it looks like I think we do have an apex coming in it looks like yeah, late September, so maybe maybe later this month or early June, you probably look for a breakout here. It looks like we just got another rejection, so probably does come back down and test around the low side of the range. Ultimately, though, I I, I would be looking for further upside on the chart. I uh, wouldn't be surprised like long term. I don't know how long you're you know you're you're thinking here, but long term, I would be looking somewhere around like thirty one to maybe even uh, thirty three and a half bucks. Um, you know, gonna gonna mostly trade with with uh, with gold, I imagine. And gold is kind of looking the same thing too. A little bit of short-term consolidation, a little bit of short-term downside, but ultimately, you know, still have to favor the long-term upside in this case. Uh, ben Dal uh, Dalby says, would you mind taking a look at LBS1? Okay, LBS1, this is Lumber, I believe? Lumber Futures? Um, LBS, yeah, it is. Uh, it is, I believe you're looking at this one right here. Yep, okay, sweet. And let me just double check. Okay, weekly and monthly. All right, uh, monthly is a bit toppy right there, but... Let's see what the weekly looks like and see if anything else is revealed within this one. Yeah, it does look a little bit toppy to me. I'd be looking for it to chop around here for a while. Um, let's see what the daily looks like as well. Okay, it's it's probably going to take its time here, yes, but I do think that you might you may have actually seen like a major macro top in this case. Um, hard to be bullish on this thing as long as it's below about fifteen hundred. However, do we look for continuation just yet? No, probably bounces around within this region for a while. Wouldn't be surprised to see this take you know weeks, perhaps. Uh, probably does test both sides of this range uh, multiple multiple times before an actual resolution in this case seeing as we just tested the downside of it probably be looking for the next test of the upside um, i'm curious in this case where are our major levels coming in as well yeah just above this level so i would be cognizant of this one um as trappy as long as it's below about 15 20. i play this long term uh long term downside but short term medium term uh, as far as like a weekly and monthly goes this one's going to go sideways here for a while and as long as it's below this level right here, I, I would be looking at this as very, 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 very likely uh, to ultimately come down um, significantly, probably probably below a thousand bucks over time. Uh, but don't underestimate how much time this can take. It's probably going to take, you know, it's sweet time in this, you know, in this uh, particular instance. And um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say about it other than that. Maybe we'll look at it quarterly as well, just to get the macro on this. It seems like you're very high term time frame schedule here um yeah okay okay if you see any sort of a i mean any sort of a closure really really below 1200 by end of month maybe even say uh below this current area right now i'd be looking at this as very very likely at least a monthly top for now and probably probably trades back down towards like 850 to 900 bucks or so um hey what's up shahar morning morning to you sir it's mr epstein not related to pedophilia okay good to know i'm very glad to hear that uh <laughs> we have very good people in this community uh can you look at utk usd on daily and uh thoughts prediction predictions you say utk i don't have any predictions sir uh oh it's a it's a crypto of course it's a fucking crypto of course it's a crypto what do we have here uh quarterly is not very revealing uh daily Look, the more that I look at a lot of these things, like some of the altcoins are, they're not bad. Uh, look, this one kind of strengthens my resolve that I do think that we see, we see, an, we see a move to the upside first outside of this range before a downside move. Um, okay, so what, hold on, what time frames were you looking at here? Uh, okay, you did say daily. I actually do want to see what the low term time frames look like here. Yeah, very similar to Bitcoin. Look, if Bitcoin comes down to 35, you'll probably find this one somewhere around like 31 and a half cent or 31 cent even. Uh, daily. I don't think, I, you know, I, it's certainly not the worst chart in the world right now. Uh, look, you don't get bearish on something like this um, until you really start to get daily closures or even just coming back down like 29, 29 cents is going to be pretty bad. But uh, especially daily closures below there. Yes, yeah, so I'd be looking for big, bad moves to the downside. Probably somewhere down around here. Again, easier to watch Bitcoin for direction. But in this case, um, I'd actually be looking for a bounce of this current level. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Pretty similar to everything else, man. Still operating on high, or, well, do we have hard lows here? No, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. You could look at this as an actual, you know, it's our last uh, higher low, and that is certainly a lower low in comparison to that. Let's see what the three-day looks like. 
Rejection, sir. Two day is again. It's two days fine. I don't have an issue with this one. Honestly, man, I I, I think this one bases out around here. I don't think this one's going to come down with Bitcoin. Uh, I think this one bounces here and any sort of a uh, any sort of move back above like thirty nine and a half cent. Um, I'd be extending this this uh, this target uh, much further, uh, somewhere around like fifty two to fifty five cents. In fact, um, this one does not. This one does. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. And look, this is non endorsement of the underlying technology. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. So I don't know what the fuck this thing does, but um it is showing significantly different signals especially on the daily what about the 12 hour here okay so here's how i could be looking for a little bit of short-term downside as well uh if i if i wasn't going to look at bitcoin i'd be looking at uh any sort of a closure below last 12 hour low that is 36 spot uh, 75 that's going to confirm hidden bearish divergence and that will at the very least have a target back down about 29 and a quarter potential um potential continuation yeah down to that next major target somewhere around like 22 and a half to 24 or so yeah about 24 to 22 and a half uh, but what you know one one level by one level so i'd first be looking for a move down here probably a bounce and then further continuation but uh i'd, I'd really want to see that confirmed first because honestly i i, I actually i actually kind of like the daily as far as this one goes uh, this one's kind of just kind of bouncing out of a uh, you know out of a bit of a backfill right here if, if this one was just operating on its own i'd actually say that this is uh, this is a bit of an opportunity right now but you know all things considered is it going to do anything different than bitcoin typically no typically <laughs> typically no unfortunately and bitcoin's about to confirm hidden bearish divergence too with any sort of closure below yesterday's low as well 37 uh, about 37 200 i'd say uh, and then, yeah, uh, targets down. Yeah, just below, uh, actually just around 35,000 bucks, maybe a little bit lower than that. Maybe, maybe 34, uh, five on a wick. Um, but again, it's a long, it's a long day left to go to, uh, to go here, to be fair. And keep in mind, we're also going to see the weekly closure for CME today, um, as that is going to directly influence Bitcoin on spot. And what do we, do we see anything of particular interest right here? Actually, no, not, not just yet. What about a two day? Uh, two days this one closing today um it is not actually so not very relevant either three day still still looks like it's trying to put in a bit of a structure down here at the very least uh still a bit of a jesus toast overall as we don't have enough history here uh just yet but okay here's where things become a little more clear however uh 12 hour has very obvious hidden bearish divergence for right now and if you're if you're aggressive on these calls you already looked at that as confirmed by taking out last 12 hour low that was 38 365 tick um, and your target will be at the very least 35, yeah, about 35,000 bucks with potential all the way down to, uh, mid 34, um, would look pretty bad. Would look pretty damn bad there. All right. My crook says, uh, Hey, crank, check out our plug. Uh, would you go short on from 30? It's looking like it's going to pull back. Uh, wait, what? Wait, what, sir? Wait, what? Uh, plug. Hold on. Our plug. What is <laughs> what, uh, this thing or is it a, okay. It's not a, okay. It's not a crypto. All right. We got a real stock right now. Let's get um okay so what what was your question exactly would you go short from 30 it's looking like it's going to pull back well, i mean you haven't really given me a time frame on this so these are always like difficult questions to answer without like you know tangible information here but basically what you're saying is okay do you play the trend here and do you look for this to be your next lower high yes uh, you know i would if, if you want to be a rational on this one you look at this as already confirmed you look at this rejection of the 200 you look at a death cross uh very likely looming as uh, as long as it's below the 200 which it's just barely uh you know sitting upon right now and it's not looking Looking fucking good um yeah and i would be having targets down to about 23 bucks uh do we have any sort of divergence to be aware of no actually we don't unfortunately which would have made this a little bit of an easier claw but i you know i do i i i do think that this one is high likelihood of coming down uh let's see what the weekly looks like here too yeah weekly still weekly still fine so it, it probably doesn't happen probably doesn't happen this week but um <laughs> sir what's so funny over there oh we got some good comments all right nice one uh yeah um Again, man, you know, I I, I, I want to see a daily closure below the 200 exponential average. I'm a little bit more on the conservative side, but look, I don't think that you need to be too aggressive with something like this because targets to the downside, if that is confirmed, it's going to be like 23 bucks or a little bit below there. It's going to be pretty fucking bad, man. It's going to be pretty fucking bad. But uh, let's see how the monthly looks like as well. The weekly says hold your horses for a second. The monthly is... Yeah, the mo uh, the monthly can come down here and still be overall fine. We do have a long-term reversal in place, so I wouldn't get too bearish on this one, but a move down to like, uh, what was it, 24 or so? Uh, is, is or 23 or 24 is certainly not the question. I'd be looking at that as an opportunity, though, and it technically would be a higher low as well. So, I'd, you know, I'd give it a chance here. Monthly is still fine long term. Um, OK, cool. Uh, Abbott Dynamics says, do, or, well, you're basically just asking, can you short 30 bucks? Look, if you short 30 bucks, where's the stock going to be? Basically the high of yesterday, 30, 60. It's an easy risk reward trade, yes. So, you know, that's up to you if you want to take that or not. I can't make this, that decision for you, sir. Uh, Abitomics says, I see a lot of people struggling with a simple plan for how to handle price moves. Could you give the cave an example of how you would plan for a downside move or an upside move? I mean, I've pretty much been doing that this whole video, <laughs> this whole video. Um, let's see. 
Let's see. Uh, don't you have a time limit up, up now? No, uh, no, I'm, I'm fine on time. I just I just got another uh, 30 minutes. Uh, thank you for that, Nimba, though. Thank you for that, sir. Okay, let me just... Where did I leave off here? Okay, okay. Where was that? Where was that? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so Abadamek is saying that uh, he's, he, he's noticing that a lot of people are having issues with coming up with a trading plan. So how could i give an example of that well what i would okay first off i would i would run you towards that video that i spoke about earlier with filling out a trade checklist because one of the portions of them is not just position management but also risk management which is you know equally as important of course anyways your question is essentially how would you plan for an upside move or a downside move first off define what time frame you're looking for there look I look at Bitcoin as more or less consulting on the whole as long as it's between about 32,000 bucks and 50,000 bucks to the upside. So if you're looking for the macro trending move, you know, does that mean that you wait for $50,000 to get taken out to the upside? Perhaps yes, if you do want to be a little bit more of a confirmation trend trader, I suppose. Uh, by the same token, do you maybe take an opportunity or maybe maybe take a shot at the bottom side of the range because then your risk management is rather simple as you know, you're buying essentially close to where you would be managing your risk off of? Yes, although the probability of that working out in comparison to waiting for an actual reversal is going to be lower, obviously. So it depends on how aggressive or conservative you want to be. Now, by the same token, if you're planning for the downside move, I mean, I, you know, I've pretty much laid this out as all, you know already, but a weekly closure below about 32.3, we'll call it, just anywhere lower than this area right here, or a daily below about 31. Yes, you know, I would be looking for a move down to like 25,000 bucks. There's probably going to be a bounce along the way, maybe 29 or uh, or 28 and a half, whatever it ends up being, and uh, and potential continuation of 20,000 bucks. It's very, you know, very, very possible here. So as far as planning for it, you know, what you really should be doing right now, if you're not sure, if you're not sure of like what you should be doing right now, if you're, or if you're like really having a question mark, um, as, and, and you just and you can't decide on what to do, do nothing because having cash is a position and it's a very powerful position as well. The reason why is as well, let's just go back to this example right here. Look, if you had cash on hand for this whole mega dump right here, 50% dump, you could have played a pretty nice bounce even if you were just playing spot, you know, and, and trying to buy and, and just trying to, uh, you know, only be on the long side. You could have done that, you know, relatively easily for almost $10,000 move or actually a little more than a $10,000 move. You know, very respectable, obviously. So my point is, is that look you don't always need to be in fucking position man you don't always and and while it's good to have a plan yes understand that that plan can mean that you don't have to be exactly in a position at this exact moment in time look if you're trying to play the trend you got nothing right here or at least, i mean you got the daily trend yes and you might be on the weekly uh you might be on the precipice of a weekly downtrend here too but like i've been saying i i would give this time regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish i do think it's going to take time i do think that you're going to get something a little bit more obvious uh resembling a, uh, a bull trap in this case um that's just my personal opinion that doesn't mean that you have to go along that uh with that or not if you want to play this one by the books well you know your your areas of continuation for short term is going to be above forty-one thousand bucks same shit that we've been saying for the last couple of weeks here above there i would look for a shot into the deep forty thousand dollar territory somewhere between about 47 or fifty thousand bucks that's at the point where you know if if you're if you want to be bearish that's at the point where i'd be looking for a bull trap by the same token to the downside i want to see i want to see a closure uh not necessarily on new daily lows i want to see it on new weekly lows or a daily lower low than like about thirty-one thousand bucks over here that would do it for me and then yes downside targets will be initiated so hopefully that is in some way helpful but understand that you know it depends like first off understand like you have to you have to know what type of trader that you are maybe you're not even concerned with a long-term trend for myself i am mostly not the way that i do analysis on this channel and the way that i trade myself is completely fucking night and day like if you're watching this channel thinking that like i trade the long-term analysis um uh on this channel in the way that i talk about it no in fact i my my actual trading strategies are pretty fucking simple i you know I, I use maybe three indicators four indicators at most for the most part and my strategy in essence is always trends slash structure first then volatility which i use the bbwp for and then momentum if i want to uh you know you know if i want to get a bit of a bias on the actual direction you know for whatever time frame that i'm using but for the most part it's very low term time frame stuff so realistically do you need to have a long-term vision of this um you know if you're trading on like a four hour for example or an, or an hourly or anything below that if you uh, you know if you so de if you so desire i mean not i mean it's good to know yeah it's gonna it's good to know like a general gist of it but you can get that just from the trend you don't need it's not necessarily as relevant to you um you just want to be aware of like the of, the of the greater pivots on the market 
rather than like all of the minutia details because that can just be confusing and annoying and what i would suggest for a lot of people watching content on you know on a channel like this like understand what kind of trader you are first before just adopting you know whatever you know whatever is going on right here because it's very very likely that 90 percent of stuff going on in this channel is just not even relevant to you if you're a short-term trader yes we do talk about that but it's relatively simple stuff i mean it's it's not like we're not we're not like trying to fucking solve the da vinci code right now uh, as well so you know when we're talking about all the different time frames and all the different indicators here understand that realistically in my experience most professional traders either use no indicators or they use definitely less than five usually around two or three um, for myself i use about three to four depending upon the situation and um and yeah that's that's pretty much where i leave it on that on that one uh okay sweet uh rlh says ewt usd uh daily please okay so this is some sort of a some sort of another highly seen crypto for sure oh it definitely is energy web token that sounds good that sounds really fucking good and you're saying on a daily um yes on a daily okay yeah this one this one looks like a clear and obvious uh, lower high here too hidden bearish divergence i'll be looking for this one to come back down again assuming bitcoin comes down here too this, you know targets on this one would be about eight and a half maybe bounce there continuation potential to low side of the range at 770 ish region uh weekly not enough history here to really go off of four hour four hours keeling on over already and uh has already taken out uh, and, and has already reversed the trend as well so uh yep four hour tsi turning down four hour rsi same thing I'd have to be, uh, I'd, I'd, you know, I, I do think that it could be warranted to be a little more aggressive in this situation. And uh, there you go. All right, sweet. Hey, what's up, Josh? There he is. Yo, man, I got another top. Oh, my fucking man. Okay, Josh is just on a goddamn roll recently. This time on Doggy. Nice, nicely fucking done, man. Holy shit. Uh, how do you feel about using the jewel as a trading edge? Um, okay, so how do I feel about using the jewel as a trading edge? So, so the jewel is essentially a very complex uh, momentum oscillator um so how do i uh, how do i feel about using it for a trading edge i like it but the problem with the jewel or at least what uh what i would suggest considering if you are interested in it is that you're not going to get too many signals on the jewel unless you're losing very very low term time frames i mean in general that kind of applies to most indicators anyways but uh you know compared to like an rsi signal for example like on a divergent signal you're going to get probably like you know 4x times uh the signals that you would get on the jewel for a similar you know time frame um anyways uh do i like it or, or do i do i like using it yeah absolutely man um but let me see if i understand okay is there anything more to that question um let's actually go look at doggy coin um but yeah to, to answer your question uh, uh, straight up yeah if i see a signal on the jewel i've uh, i've had enough past bad experiences to know that when i don't listen to it it's uh usually doesn't, doesn't end too well for me so especially on the higher term time frames but again you know if if you it, it depends if that's going to play into your strategy you know you're you're not going to get too many daily signals in fact they're few and far between maybe a handful a year actually on a full hour you probably get like you know a couple a couple of month if you're lucky if things are really moving um so uh again it, it really depends what you're really looking for in this case uh as far as doggy coin goes yeah we do have a nice little top right at the 200 simple this one's looking a little bit more like an obvious bull trap here too let's see how let's see how high this one got up on this uh current range just out of curiosity okay yeah we're right around the uh, not point uh, no 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 we're actually right around the 382. okay so is this mark going to top out of the 382 on a bull trap i i still think that that's a rather you just don't see that too often, man. You just don't see that too often. But uh, I, I do think that you got it. Oh, my God. You, you literally fucking nailed the top on doggy. Yeah, this one's coming back down, man. <laughs> oh, no. The dog, the doggy, uh, the doggy party is already over. Um, hold on. Let's see. What about the three day? Yeah, three days, not too bad. But short term, does it come back down and base around like 33 and a half or 30 or 33 even? Probably. Yes. Uh, buy daily. Buy daily is actually fine here. I want to get too bearish on this one just yet. I want to get too bearish on this one just yet, actually. Uh, probably plays out a bit of a short-term range. I'd give it a chance, a little bit lower, somewhere around like 33 to 35 region. See what, what about the four hour? Eh, four hour still kind of dancing around. To be fair, still got higher lows as long as you're above uh, about 31 and a half. So give it the benefit of the doubt, I suppose. Actually, was one of the better operating ones, but you know, you did have a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, a buy, you know buy the rumor, sell the news uh, type of uh, bullshit going on there too. You know, this this one is, this one is mostly a meme, as you already know. So I try to stay as far away from uh, from these things as possible uh jacob spearling hey what's up jacob uh hex usd uniswap uh sure man okay all right we can look at hex i'm actually curious to see how hex has been doing because hex is it's actually funnily enough been one of the better charts here and holy fuck all right uh i'm gonna get so much fucking hate for this i'm gonna get so much fucking hate for this there is no denying that hex is um is the best chart right now in cryptocurrency line. this this thing is this thing continues to stay up high uh, again i'm not making any comment on the underlying technology i know that, that a lot of people 
uh, have many things to say about that. I'm not looking at that. I'm only looking at charts here. And as far as charts goes, this is um, this is better than Matic at this point. Uh, holds the lows. Rallies off the 21 above all major movement averages. Just obviously getting reaccumulated at a very high level right here. Weekly is good. Um, I still remain, I suppose, bullish on this. Looking for, I think my target was like 8 cent or so. Let's see. Let's see what this range is, is going to give us right here. Uh, yeah, about uh, anywhere around like 7.5 to 8 cent region. And could it go for more over time? Maybe. Uh, but I'd at least want to see it uh, get somewhere around there. Now, again, I, I'm, I'm just so fucking hesitant to be like lenient on anything if Bitcoin's not looking, you know, super good. Um, you know, especially something like this. But uh, there's no denying it, man. I mean, this is a pretty fucking good chart. So fair enough. Fair enough. Got to give credit where credit is due. And um, yeah, I, I mean, th this one can come back down to like four and a half cent, but that's completely fine. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with this thing as long as it's above this, this range low right here, which is actually uh, just under four cent. In fact, fair enough. Take it as you will. Doctor says crown, bruh. Let's look at the uh, WTF four hour daily weekly. Bitcoin is failing, is failing, failing us. Uh, much love, bro. Much love to you too, sir. All right. Uh, WTF four hour in daily. Okay. WTF. Okay. This thing, wind trust. Wait, hold on. Is this what you're, okay. Is this what you're looking at? All right. Um, Okay. Oh, no, it's probably... Oh, motherfucker, it's probably this thing. Oh, dear lord! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Call the, call the shitcoin police twice in that case. Um, Bitcoin is failing us. Is, 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 this, is this actually what you wanted to look at? This is insane. Oh, my God. This is, like, actually insane. What the fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you have actually found maybe the worst chart that we could possibly find. It's down 99.5%. Holy shit, man. Oh my god, just imagine this. You're just marching up, you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna invest I'm gonna invest in this WTF token. I'm getting rich as fuck riding this green dildo to the moon, 8,000% to the upside, no problem! And then... Oh, fuck! Fuck! Wow. The good news is, is that, um... Well, actually, there's not really much good news on this thing because a 90% drop is always a 90% drop. And uh, this one can still drop another 90%, I suppose. It's not fucking good, man. It's not good, sir. It's not good indeed. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, Mr. Fly says, got another capitulation on Mimi Ribbon uh, Derp, sir. Um, did we get another capitulation on it? Uh, I don't believe so. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You actually are seeing that right now. Okay, signal is postponed. There is no more. There is no more signal. Now, keep in mind, this is this is obviously reactive to current price action, so we do need to wait for a daily here. But uh, yeah, if price action closes here lower, it looks like we will be waiting a little bit longer. <laughs> Again, blue buy signal uh, remains to be seen here, so uh, it seems like prudence and waiting for that signal is uh, is of the utmost importance, at least for uh, at least for this portion of the market cycle. All right, M M M M. We got Amer Alkani says uh, inside on HMX, please. Uh, sure, man. Um, um, no time frame given though, but uh, I'll try my best here. Uh, I'm guessing it's this thing. Okay, uh, I'm guessing you're maybe Australian or or no, yeah, you're probably Australian. Yeah, the other ones were uh, not looking about the same. Uh, actually, looks fine. Actually, looks fine on the daily. Uh, clear and obvious accumulation at this level. I can already see though that it barely fucking trades. The, these Australian shitcoin stocks are so bizarre. Um, but I've learned to respect them a little bit after speaking with Nimbo. Um, Honestly, man, I, I look. I don't feel confident on some like uh, I don't feel confident on some like this just because like it, you know it looks like this. It goes days with like barely trading. It just looks sloppy as all hell. Um, but if you put a gun to my head, yes, it, it is an uptrend. It is a weekly reversal. We do see a change of behavior on volume. We do see a daily's getting reaccumulated. Probably does gun for prior highs in this case somewhere around here if I had to guess. Uh, somewhere around like fifteen and a half cent. Um, maybe more over time if you actually start to close dailies and week, or I guess this is a weekly, but especially if you close, uh, yeah, especially if you close weeklies above there, even daily is probably good enough too. Um, I, I suppose it's fine, man. I mean, that chart is, uh, for what it's worth, completely fine. Uh, fro okay, Frozen's got, uh, okay, Spy. Yeah, we can look at Spy. Do you want to look at uh, Spy Futures or just Spy straight up? Because the Futures is going to be actually showing, you know, price action from right now. Um, I do think it's a little bit short-term top. We looked at this earlier, though. I don't know if you're looking for, like, a very short-term analysis or a very long-term analysis. But we did do a more long-term analysis earlier discussing what to be looking for um, if this is going to put in, like, a macro top, which is a, which is a possibility um, here. However, it, you know, we still got a lot of month to go. So let's just go down to the lower-term time frames now because we haven't really spoken about that. And I just want to, and I just want to see realistically. Uh, okay, do we have a trend reverse right here? Well, yes, we got a high, we got a low, we got a lower high, we got a lower low. That's that's nasty. <laughs> that's pretty fucking nasty. Um, 
Let, let's actually go a little bit lower than that. Are we trending down right now? Yeah, we are trending down right now. I'd be I'd be looking for this one to short term come back down to like 4170 ish region, maybe try for another bounce there. But uh, coming into next week, does that set it up for another try lower? Potentially, yes. Uh, you know, maybe over time, somewhere around the daily 55 uh, rising rather rapidly. But that would be in your like your mid 4100s. Um, again, it really depends what time frame you're looking at there. But uh, it is it it, it, uh, it is very obviously downtrend on the short term time frames. M. Oh, you said okay. You did say lower term time frames. Oh, perfect. Perfect. It's like I read your fucking mind. Um, yeah, man. We can go even lower than that. Actually, go check it out right here. I do want to see what like a thirty minute looks like. For example, we got a higher low in place, but we got a lower high as well. Consolidating. Uh, no, man. I, I'd be looking for this one to come down. I'd be looking for this one to come down a little bit, a little bit lower. What the hell is going on over here? Elsa is having a uh, Elsa is having a good laugh attack right now too. You don't understand these comments. Don't understand these comments. What the fuck do you mean you don't understand these comments? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, overall, I'd be looking for this when it comes lower. Uh, probably tries another base somewhere around like 41, uh, 4170s region. Anywhere around there is good. Uh, KE says hex up while Bitcoin down. Break it or not? Uh, it's not breaking out right now. No, but it is. It is looking more or less good. I feel like I'm being used as a fucking marketing ploy. But you know, if you're asking my if you're asking my straight up opinion, I you know I'm, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna put your foot around that one. Like it's still it it actually is. For, for all the charts that we've seen today, that is the one that is clearly and obviously doing something uh, different and in a good way, I'd say, as well. Uh, Abbott says, uh, always helpful, sir. Uh, been doing very well because you taught me to stick to my plan. Yep, that's, I mean, that's, that's mostly what it's about, man. It's like, look, if you have a plan and you've actually proven to yourself that it works for you, you know, by doing it on a demo account, you know, at least 20 to 30 times, I'd say, you, you know, you're, 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 you're in a very good place as a trader. And it's just about tidying up, you know, very, very small screws. Uh, after that, you know, you have to understand that over a long period of time, just a, even a 1% uh, difference in hit rate is going to make a humongous difference in your long-term equity curve. Um, okay, uh, many people chasing price and not making that plan. E exactly, man. You know, a lot of people just like, a, well, you have to also understand, like for most people, they're not, and I don't see this in like a demeaning way, but they're they're not a, they're you know, they're not going to be a full-time trader. And to really like, I guess put put like everything into it you know you got to pretty much discount everything else in your life so you know if you have like a you know if you have like a, a regular job or something if you're doing anything of, of particular interest outside of the space then of course you know it's just you, you can't you can't really expect that but you also can't really expect good results in that case as well like understand if you are looking to make a quick buck in this space or in any space related to trading under you know understand that it really does take you know a while to actually you know cultivate the skill um with dedicated effort and everything like that it's just like anything else right you wouldn't try to fucking go on to a professional basketball court with michael jordan not saying that like you know it's of the same regard but you kind of get the idea who's been practicing for years and years and years and it's like his main disposition and then expect to like just walk off and do well of course not man you know you got to put in the actual effort you know trading a lot of people get uh, unfortunately a lot of people actually get lucky with trading when they first start and then they get you know lulled into this false sense of confidence um where you can you know throw a little bit more caution to the wind especially in a market like we saw for the past six seven months right problem with that is is that at some point it's going to reverse and that's exactly what we saw right there um trump uh thump rat says great video thoughts on inj usdt cup and handle uh sure all right inj this one used to be rather popular as well i remember engine injective yeah no it's in uh, i'm thinking of engine actually i don't know this one as well in fact uh hourly is obviously breaking down here uh four hours already breaking down four already even has a lower house well oh and on volume too uh i'd probably be looking for this one to trade back down somewhere around like eight and a half bucks uh but what time frames did you say oh is oh is it a cup and handle in the four hour uh I don't think so, sir. Um, cup and handle is typically a continuation pattern. And in this case, you do not have continuation. <laughs> well, at least not the direction that you want, sir. Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laughing at you, but, um, uh, but no, this would not be a cup and handle. This is not an Adam and Steve pattern. This is a keeling over right here and you're breaking the trend. So I'd be looking for this one to come down as well. It, it, you know, it, it is really looking like Bitcoin wants to come back down about 35. So I would be, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd play alt accordingly. They're not, they're very unlikely to do what Hex is doing. Uh, a Hex is definitely an outlier right now, all things considered. You see momentum turning down right here. You see bearish divergence right there, breaking the trend as well. Uh, or it's, it's not even that it broke the trend. It's actually just continuing with the trend. I'd be looking for this one back down somewhere around like eight and a half, maybe even lower than that depending upon how uh beat up bitcoin gets here let's see we even got hidden bearish divergence potential here too again if you're aggressive you already look at that it's confirmed and you you're, you're looking towards eight bucks actually uh if that if that holds true uh shahar says come to damn straw to amsterdam actually i love amsterdam man uh elsa elsa needs to learn about amsterdam as well exactly two weeks from today and you and elsa will get a huge cup of ganja juice on ganja juice is that is that real do you get high from that 
Can that even work? <laughs> that, that sounds dangerous, man. Uh, I'd actually be very, I actually really do want to put together a uh, trip to, to Amsterdam again um, and show Elsa that place. Uh, it's a fucking magical place, man. I love it. Travel. Yeah, I know. Well, we, can we travel or can we not travel? What, what's the, what's, what's the deal? Do we have to, do we have to wear the old uh, face diaper on the plane or? Oh, we need to get the vaccine to travel. Oh, that, we have to get a vaccine to travel? Really? Oh my God. That seems like, <laughs> well, whatever. For another stream, perhaps. Uh, Hex Outlaw says, hello, sir. Thank you for always being unbiased and sticking to the TA. I know you uh, get a lot of schlack for saying Hex is killing it. Uh, Crown by Hex make Aangus strong like bull. Uh, look, man, uh, look, I I'm, I I'm, I'm not going to, uh, it's, it's not for me. It's not for me. And like most of these altcoins, like I've never really bought an altcoin, man. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not that I don't like, it's just I don't trade those things. But uh, it's just more Hex for you, sir. You know, it's just more Hex for you, man. Um, let's see. Stalks here says, uh, ha ha, I didn't know what the fuck was a coin. I was Oh, you were actually kidding <laughs> you bastard you fucking bastard you got me man ocean usd uh daily weekly okay okay i think this one was a really old like 2016 2017 one as well i do recognize the name but i don't don't think i've looked at it anytime recently um again man we are getting some pretty nasty signals here to be fair uh let's see what the uh actually let's see what time frames you picked out here uh you did say daily weekly okay well four hours yeah four hours gonna give us oh my god oh my fucking lord Oh my fucking lord. Yeah, I'd be looking for this one short term, come back down about 57 cents. What about daily? Daily is going to confirm hidden bearish divergence. Any, any sort of closure below yesterday's low. Uh, again, if you're aggressive, you already look at that. And Death Crawl is loom looming overhead as well. I'd be looking towards 50 cents if that, uh, if, that, if that is confirmed. I mean, weekly, we don't really have much of a chart to be going off of right here, but. Um, you know how you know how much downside do we reasonably have i'd still be looking at bitcoin i'd still be looking at bitcoin in this case and have we actually taken out the four hour level just yet i mean it's really fucking close it's really fucking close there man the buy early's already done it you know is a buy early a, a strong enough time frame usually is usually is um let's see steph well hey what's up stealth uh zur fill usd coinbase 30 minute it's on coinbase really um all right, we can do that. I guess if you're looking at a very low-term time frame, we could we could probably chart it on Coinbase. Uh, I'm just looking if there's enough history. Yeah, there, yeah, there's enough history for a 30 minute. Um, I mean, you're really on a low-term time frame right now, so just understand understand what I'm talking about. Uh, we did get a dual sell signal right here. We're getting continuation on top of that. Natural target's gonna be 30. Uh, sorry, the 55, which is 84 and a half to 85 bucks. I'd be looking for a short-term bounce there. Could we get continuation? Well, we'll have to go to a higher time frame for that. Again, another chart that I actually don't hate. If you ask me about the daily, man, I do not hate this chart at all. Uh, this chart's actually fine on a daily, as far as I'm concerned. Um, look, man, I, look, I, I know that you want to look at a 30 minute. And, and yeah, the 30 minute does have some downside here. But uh, when I'm looking at the daily, man, you know, maybe it comes back down to like 80 bucks base, you know, a little bit of continuation below that 55. But ultimately, um, this one, I, I'm not bearish on this as long as it's above about uh, 60, 69 and a half or so. Great number right there as well. But uh, let's see what the weekly looks like here too. One of the better charts that we've seen thus far, actually. One of the better charts that we have seen thus far. Not of the same, uh, not of the same cut as uh, Hex, but this one definitely holding it up a lot higher, all things considered. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's see. Uh, Abdynamic says, uh, check out Bo Burnham special on Netflix. Uh, much love, sir. All right, is it... Uh, Sounds like, uh, but where do I know that from? Is he a comedian? Is he a comedian? Is he a comedian? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, man, we got we got a free night tonight. Uh, Chris Wiz says, will you please share your thoughts on ZECUSD? Um, <laughs> I can, man. I can't promise that you're going to like it, though. This one is uh, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest perennial losers here. Um, wow. Actually did close above the range highs, which was, uh, well, at least the last, the last high right here at about 28. But uh, God damn, man. Uh, here's a real chart. <laughs> Pretty fucking bad, but... Um, Actually, did have one of the more, one of the better bounces, all things considered. Uh, four hour keeling down, man. Uh, depends what time frame you're looking at. Okay, what time frame do you want to look at? Uh, you didn't specify a time frame, so okay, short term, yeah. I, you know, it's it's very likely got some downside here. Again, driven by Bitcoin. Um, in this, or it, I, it's not that it's driven by Bitcoin. It's just Bitcoin's easier to watch in this case. Uh, again, four hour closing below about thirty six, uh, whatever the fuck it was, or I think it was thirty seven five in this case, which were about almost a thousand bucks below right now. It's maybe like an hour or two to go to closure. By the way, we're. Getting very close to my time frame here too. Uh, I'd be looking for this one to come down somewhere around like 140 to 145. Probably try for a bounce there. Daily though, not um, not the worst, man. I'd probably be looking for another bounce. Yeah, somewhere around about 140ish region. Give it a chance there. Weekly, Inc inconclusive, but long term, uh, long term, not the not the healthiest chart of all time because this is what it actually looks like right here. 
another 27 or actually not even a 2017 shitcoin. This one's been around since uh, a lot longer than 2017. Actually, this one I think goes back to 2015 or 2016, perhaps. Uh, it's actually one of the more uh, dinosaur coins in this case. But uh, again, another example of one that's been relatively weak, not getting around its prior time high while everything else was rallying to the moon and beyond and, and the strong ones were making ultimize. Not a good sign, man. Definitely not a good sign long term. Uh, hey, what's up, Yasek? G uh, good to see you, man. Uh, you do not need a vax to go to the Netherlands. Oh, fuck yeah, man. 72 hours test. I'm going in two months. Got ferry booked. Nice one, man. Okay, well, maybe I'll see you over there. That's, uh, that's actually really, really good to know because, um, I mean, Elsa's asking, is that true? I don't know if it's true or not, but, uh... As, I, I don't know. I've, I've no real reason to. Uh, Yasek's always led us to good things, so you know what? I'm gonna trust Yasek. Uh, Josh, Josh says I'm specifically uh, talking about just using a, a jewel for four-hour trading, not a position uh, to rush in any trades. I mean, if you can be very, very patient with it and and understand that you're not gonna get signals like that often. Um, yeah, I uh, actually love it for a four-hour. In fact, we do see a lot of major pivots in the market going on in four hours. So let's let's just back test it a bit here. All right, so here's a continuation buy signal that happened on second of June. Let's see what the results were. Second of June was right around, where, where's the actual signal? Right around here. Bitcoin went up from 37 all the way to 39 and some odd change. We did get a pretty damn good one on the actual low thus far, I believe as well. Yeah, 19th of May at 2300 specifically. Um, that was this area right here before a bounce from 36.5 all the way to 42.5. Uh, not bad on that one as well. Let's see, what about to the downside? We do have a, this could be considered a signal right here, but I don't, I don't take those ones. I take like the really obvious ones. Here's a, here's a somewhat more obvious one. This would be on the 2nd of April. They get this move from about 59 all the way, ultimately down to about 56, but an initial move down to 57. Um, let's see, what about this one right here? Yeah, this one, pretty damn good signal. Getting the, not, not exactly the high, but about 60,000 bucks before driving down to about 54. Um, and then this one over here actually getting uh, pretty pretty much nailing the top right there actually pretty damn good uh it's not perfect obviously as no things are perfect it's not a fucking magic pill uh as nothing's a fucking magic pill but you know do i do i like it well of course i like it <laughs> it's all you know also understand that i'm biased here too but uh, but yeah man i do uh you know i do i do certainly like it and um and uh and if that makes sense for you and if, and if that uh in the, in, and if those sort of time frames and those sort of you know not very often signals but but typically very powerful signals is uh you know as a part you know as part of your trading plan or, or you can be patient enough for that yeah fair enough fair enough it you know it could be a good fit uh let's see mark beetle hey what's up mark beetles uh hey crown thanks for all the support over the last few years my fuck <laughs> my, my pleasure sir finally consistently profitable night fucking nice man there you go uh finally consistently profitable with a plan in journal in at 30 34 6 30 uh laddered out at 30 percent, 60 percent, and 100 profit fucking nice yes 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 again you have just traded a relatively disc difficult portion of the market right there with extremely good results man i mean um that that is that that is a sign of a you know of a successful trader you had a plan you followed your plan and there you go you get to read the rewards of it and that's actually pretty damn similar to, to how i do it as well with like layering out uh, on exits not necessarily at those exact levels because i don't look at it in, in, in that way but i do things in thirds typically uh, which it sounds like you are doing as well and i feel like that kind of takes the the initial pressure off uh, by the way, I have about less than 10 minutes here uh, before, I have to be, before I have to go. I do have a bit of a doctor's appointment, and that's probably going to take me like half an hour to get there. Uh, Thomas K says, can you check shitcoins XCAD or MIST? Um, let's see. Let's see if we can bring these up. XCAD. Uh, okay, so this is, oh man, this is really deep in the shitcoin drawer. It looks like, oh my lord. Yeah, bad. Uh, this is this is only four. I mean, it's really not been around for that long, but its history for what it has been out is uh, just a history of selling. In fact, <laughs> so I'll be looking for this one to retest around the lows. Uh, it's not much of an analysis there, but we don't really have too much uh, history uh, missed. We can check this out really, really quick because I'm just going to be pretty damn fast. And oh, it, it, it is here. OK, on, on Poloniex. Holy fuck, this thing doesn't trade either. And again, this is another four hour chart that's, you know, it's been around for just over a month. It's really not much to be going off of. But do I think that it comes down and retests the lows alongside the rest of the market? Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah, in this case. Uh, Abidemic says, uh, yeah, comedian performer insane you guys uh, will love. All right. All right. I'll definitely check it out, man. I'll definitely keep it in mind. Um, OK, all right. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it looks like Nimbo said four hour jewel on Bitcoin. Um, what about it? Is there any signals going on right here? I mean, it's curling back down. Yes. And first things first, I mean, technically you should be looking at this next move to the downside. It's a potential, God damn it, as a potential um, uh, continuation signal uh, possibly being put in here as well. Similar to this one right here. Um, but God damn it. It does look pretty damn menacing. I, you know, I, it's, it's kind of hard to ignore that, to be fair. Uh, but overall, I think we are pretty much 
Uh, I think we're pretty much through everything right here, and I'm pretty much at the exact end of my time too, which is pretty damn good timing. Holy shit. How the fuck did that happen? Oh, well, either which way. Um, let's see. Do we want to wrap this one up? Again, you know, technically speaking, should I be waiting for a four hour closure on new, you know, on a lower low here? Yeah, it should be. Do I, do I think that the two, that the two hour can already front run this? Look, probably yes in this case. Uh, am I trading this myself right now? No, uh, I'm, tr I'm trading on the bottom side of this range. I'm trading, I'm trading on the top side of this range. Uh, anything between there is just not a part of my edge, you know, at this point, at, at this moment in point. Um, now, what I would say is I'd still repeat the same things as what I've been saying for the past couple of weeks here. As long as Bitcoin is below 41,000 bucks, there's not even a talk of like, you know, a short term, medium term continuation to that potential bull trap area between, you know, let's call it like 45 to 50,000 bucks. Anywhere around there is is, uh, is pretty much fine. Um, for right now, you know, we are seeing several signals that do suggest a little bit of short-term downside. Anywhere around 35, maybe 34, uh, 500 is fine. But I would not necessarily call a breakdown to like new lower lows just yet. And when I say lower lows, I mean like a weekly continuation in this case, um, you know, below 30,000 bucks, two targets of, you know, ultimately 25 and perhaps even 20,000 uh, bucks in its totality. But at least for right now, I'd give things a chance um, to probably, probably try for another weekend over the base or, or something like that. And then if we do see another move back above 41,000 bucks, that's at the point where I would be, you know, essentially uh, signaling the caution lights, not because it's destined to happen, but because uh, I do think that it's, well, it's, it is it is the right thing to be looking for as a trader as that would just be another lower high and that'd be your first lower high in a weekly but as it stands right now we don't really have enough to be going off of uh just yet on the weekly here but as we did suggest with the bi-weekly macd with the daily 21 and 200s uh both the both the e and the s and uh, i think we looked at something else as well i forget i forget what the other one was what uh what the other one was that that, that we looked at but there's some other signal as well that says hey look you know yes things probably do bounce again from this thirty thousand dollars level however that bounce traditionally has been a bull trap so you know you, you play this kind of one at your own peril uh as for the current moment but um I think I'll just leave things right there, man, and come back on uh, tomorrow, perhaps. But with that said, I want to wish you the best, best, and the haps, the happiest. Take care, and hopefully see you soon. I need to go catch a doctor's appointment. I salute you, and...